rocks. Fascinating. Aren't they? It's a bird bath. Is that just rainwater? It looks a little weird. The birds seem to like it. They're even singing a little tune. Please don't do that. I tied the boat up to the mooring post, so it'll stay put. For now. Probably. Loving the confidence. It's just an archway, but it seems a little ominous. Like, walking through it might give you bad luck. Too late. You ready, Sally? Grimoire, I've been standing here for seven and a half minutes. Just checking. Do you have the map? Uh, yeah, but it's basically blank. Did you read the case file? What do you think? I'm not sure yet. It's really not a lot to go on. Did you read it? Yeah, I'll read it on the way to the crime scene. This is some garden. Do the plants all look a little strange to you? What animal is that? Hawk. Bear. Lizard. Right. Of course. A hawk bear lizard. It's a stone carving. Wonder how it got cracked. I think it's supposed to look like that. It's an egg. It's a bandstand. It's small for a bandstand. It's a one-man bandstand. And it's full of the same weird water that was in the lake. Any fish in there? Not a single one. Although there is something in there. It's a cassette tape. Or it used to be. Spooky. What do you think it's for? I think it's to scare away detectives. Is it working? No. It's a statue of some hideous, scaly, bipedal fish monster. Playing a harp. Playing a harp. Hang on a second. This isn't just a regular statue, is it? Something tells me we're not going to solve this just yet. Let's come back later. It must do something. You'd hope so, wouldn't you? I'm still not Should sure. Should we take another look? There's an O on the floor. Oh, yeah. Tangle Tour. 
twer. Is that an envelope? It's been opened, but the letter's still in there. Let's read it. Isn't that an invasion of someone's privacy? No, oh, definitely. Do you think he'll start to move if we try to go inside? No. I think he'll just silently judge us. Little bird feeders. How do you know they're for birds? Should we ring the doorbell? Why would we not? It's a little melody. Don't think it's locked. Oh, that means we can just walk straight in, right? I'm pretty sure that's the rule, yeah. Finally, we get to investigate a murder in a spooky mansion. It's not that spooky, really. Don't ruin this. Now it's a big glass tube. Filled with water. There are weeds in there. In sand. It's an aquarium? Could be. Except there's nothing living in it. Anymore. What is that? I think it's a family tree. Fiona Fellow. Dead center. She must be important. She's half Fellow and half Remington. Do you think she still lives here? Poppy Pointer. She's half Remington and half Pointer. Do you think she still lives here? Fitz Fellow. Half Fellow, half Everstone. Do you think he still lives here? Big letter F. Of course. Who doesn't hang a giant banner of their initial in the lobby of their mansion? This one has a big P. That's P... probably important. How very P... perceptive of you. It's not locked. A door. Oh, what's behind it? A room. of Freya Fellow. Looks like she fell onto her back. There's a single patch of blood, right in the middle. No real signs of a struggle. That's weird. What? Her feet were right up by the canvas. So? So she was probably standing really close to the canvas when she fell. Let's check the case file again. Supposedly, Freya was working on the painting when she was killed. It looks like she was still holding her paintbrush and palette when she fell. Didn't even get a chance to clean her brush. unfinished portrait of Flora Fellow. So, what, Freya was killed halfway through painting it? Looks that way. A 
I wonder if all of Freya's paintings are this creepy. Maybe it's just because she never got to finish it. There's something wrong with the crime scene. And something really weird about the murder weapon. We didn't find a murder weapon. a knife tipped with blood because it stabbed Freya. What? Weird, huh? You think Freya was stabbed by a painting. Not by the woman from the painting, but by the painting itself. Mm-hmm. Freya was standing right up by the canvas when she was killed. There's blood on the knife. It's the murder weapon. Right. But it's not actually a knife. It can't stab. See any other knives around here? Case closed. The case is not closed. And even if you were right, where does that leave us? A painting can't be a murder suspect. Freya's painting supplies. That's the only door in and out of the room. It's also on the floor. Sure is. Guessing it's not supposed to be down there. Is that an egg? An egg with bird feet. It's also covered in gemstones. What a completely ordinary object. I think it's a container for something. Those gems look like they come off. Nope. Did you check the clue? I'm pretty on? sure it explains where to put it. I guess that's wrong. What's the deal with those lines? It must mean something. I got it. I'm impressed. 
did it unlock? What's in there? Nothing. Nothing? Well, I'm not leaving without a clue. An empty egg is a clue, right? Is that a gramophone? I think so. Except it's got a tape deck instead of a turntable. It's also got a big crack down the middle. What about the cassette tape? Yeah, it sure is. Pink. The gramophone? Yeah, we could give it a go. We're at the top of the tower, right? I think so. Why? Doesn't matter. It's nothing. Flora... Fellow? Hey, sorry to barge in. I'm sure you're still in 
some distress. We need to ask you a few questions, I'm afraid. Did you witness the murder, Flora? Nothing. What do we do? Not sure. She's entitled to her silence, I suppose. For now. Is there anything you'd like to tell us, Flora? I don't really know anything about you at all. I think that's the way she likes it. We'll just have to ask other people about her. Yeah, okay. Freya was painting your portrait yesterday. Is that right? Was this something you had planned with her ahead of time? Was there something special about yesterday? Did you talk to Freya at all while she was painting you? She's not going to answer us, is she? Nope. But at least we can say we tried. Flora, you were definitely in the room at the time of the murder. Surely you must have seen something? Can you tell me anything about what happened to Freya? Ah, she's acting pretty suspicious, if you ask me. I don't know. Maybe she really doesn't know anything. How is that possible? It's a big stone dais. Biggest one I've ever seen. First one, too. There's a metal plaque on the bench. Is there a message engraved on it? I think there was at one point, but someone scratched it off. It's Tangle Tower, or at least it's the mansion at the base of Tangle Tower. You ever see a mushroom that big before? Not in real life. A giant glowing gemstone full of plants. AKA a greenhouse. Is that a clock? If it is, it's a clock with four faces. I'm guessing it doesn't tell the time. So what does it do? That's it. Nice work. What's in the box? A little tool thing? Looks like a telescope. But I'm not actually sure what it is. wooden trunk that opens up into a full desk. I want one. Wow, nice cape. You're not fellows or pointers. I'm sure I shall immediately regret asking. But who are you, and what is your business here? I'm Sally, and this is my sidekick, Grimoire. A uh, private detective, Grimoire. Really? You're a detective? This is a joke, it's not a good one. <clears throat> Who 
are you, anyway? Private Detective Hawkshaw. Oh, nice. Hawkshaw's a cooler name than Grimoire. Maybe I'll become her sidekick. You're not on the Freya Fellow case, too, are you? That is classified information between myself and my client. Clearly, this is something which eludes you. But a real detective refrains from handing out information to persons unknown. Oh, right. Now, if you would, I have work to do. It's not in my interest to discuss personal details. Even if you're one of the suspects in a murder? <sighs> Very well. Let us make a small exception. Ask. Oh, what are you doing here? I'm on a case at the behest of my client. How long have you been at Tangle Tower? 133 hours. Uh, five and a half days. Who are you working for? I am not at liberty to answer that. Now, I shall permit you one more question. What crime are you- How'd you get that scar? It's cool. You really think so? As it happens, I completed an examination of Flora's room on the morning before the murder. I've been investigating every single room at Tangle Tower. Hers was one of the last on my list. Did you find anything unusual? Nothing but a thin layer of dust and an atmosphere of somber melancholy. Was Flora in there at the time? She spent the duration of my search staring up at the sky, out the open window. Didn't say a word, although I'm told this is the expected behavior. What did you do after that? I spent the early evening searching the library. It took longer than it should have. Fiona leaves that room in a permanent state of disarray. Fiona was in the library too? I expected her to make an appearance, but she did not. And you stayed in the library the rest of the day? Not quite. Towards the early evening, my examination of the library was unexpectedly disrupted. Sounds of running, wailing, shouting from several floors above. I vacated the library, but before I could begin my ascent, Professor Pointer appeared. He emerged from the Pointer staircase, crossed the hall, and begun up the fellow staircase. Our eyes met. He was breathless. Something had caused him great alarm. He told me to stay out of the way. I consented and decided to return to my office in the Stone Square. As I was passing through the front door, Penelope called out from behind me. She was clutching the banister of the Pointer staircase with an apprehensive manner. She wished to know where Professor Pointer had gone. I told her what had transpired. Then, she too crossed the hall and disappeared up the fellow staircase. More so than at any moment prior, I felt like quite an intruder in the house. I took my leave, out towards the stone square. The grounds were silent. There were no signs of human life. Even the greenhouse was without its typical inhabitant. I noted that he, too, must be entangled in whatever was transpiring in Fellow Tower. An unremarkable hour passed before the gardener finally made his appearance. He spoke to me of what had occurred. His report was as clumsy and cumbersome as the man giving it. Did he seem upset? He was rattled. That much was clear. But sorrowful? Mournful? I cannot say. This one's in a little pot. Okay, that is definitely not edible. It looks like a gemstone, don't you think? It's bigger in here than I thought it would be. That's a handsome beetle. Looks like he might have magic powers. Bags of soil. It's so... blue. Hanging baskets. They're so high up. To you, maybe. You're only two inches taller than me. Two inches makes all the difference. 
All the flowers here look kind of poisonous. Can flowers be poisonous? Anything can be poisonous. Good to know. Tools. Used by a gardener. For gardening. A little chart of... Uh, actually, I have no idea what it's about. Kind of reminds me of a periodic table. What do you make of it? Not a whole lot. Sally, don't move. We're being watched. Yeah, I see him. He's a little too big to hide in the bushes. Is anyone going to say anything? Or shall we just stand around staring at each other? Right. Sorry. Sorry. That's better. I'm Sally. And the guy hiding behind me is Detective Grimoire. Who are you? Fitz Fellow. The gardener. Mm-hmm. And why are you so tall? I don't know. You work here. As the gardener. I don't get paid to do it. It's just my area of interest. What's the deal with the plants? They're all kind of weird. Right. Did you see the lake? That giant green and purple lake surrounding the entire house? Yeah, I clocked it. The color is just a byproduct. Of what? Poison? It's not poisonous. Not to you. Uh, what's this got to do with the plants? The water controls all life, just like anywhere else on the planet. Clouds form, rain falls. The water grows the plants, animals eat the plants. Anything you've perceived as an irregularity is simply a result of this hydrological cycle. Could you say that again, but like, condense it as if you were talking to a slightly stupid person? Our lake water causes the unpredictable alteration of DNA, sometimes. Alteration? Like mutation? That'd be the official term. For us, it's normal. Just nature. And you're the local expert on all this stuff? No. I'm just the gardener. I was in my greenhouse, watering and weeding. Sounds exciting. Was anyone else around? Not at first. Penelope came in a little later. She likes looking at the flowers, I think. Did you speak to each other? A little. Not too much. We both left the greenhouse in the early afternoon. I went up to my room. Then I came back outside to weed the main gardens. Didn't see anyone else. After that, I went up to the garden outside my room. And? Let me guess. Watering and weeding. Right. Did anything happen to you yesterday, Fitz? I was up in the rooftop garden. It was quiet. And then, it wasn't. I can't describe it. it. Could have been a scream, but it didn't sound human. We thought it was coming from Flora's tower, so we went up there. We? Poppy was with me. Did I not mention that? Flora's room was locked. That's normal. She usually locks it from the inside. I knocked on the door and shouted. Nobody responded. We became concerned. You kicked the door down? I did. Poppy and I went in. Freya was right there, laying on her back. Flora was there too, but I barely noticed her at first. Poppy left the room for a while. When she came back, she had her father with her, and Fifi too. Penelope arrived shortly after that, with Felix in tow. I thought that was odd. You don't normally see the two of them together. Felix took charge. There was nothing else I could do to help. I wanted to go back to my room, but I realized nobody had told Detective Hawkshaw anything. I found her pacing back and forth around the stone square. When I approached her, she snapped at me. I think she was annoyed about being made to wait outside so long. But when I told her about Freya, she fell silent. Fitz's room is unlocked. It's up in the fellow tower. 
This could be interesting. Sheet music. It's handwritten. That's a lot of notes. Looks pretty difficult. Probably why they're on the floor. Are they... Paper Latins? Whatever they are, I like them. It's like a little parade of floating spirits. Oh, whatever it is, it's playing a little trumpet. Well, it is the music room. He's gotta practice. What's with all the broken glass? Smells like a forest in here. <laughs> it's a globe. For globing. There's a faded mural on the wall. When I was a kid, I never knew the difference between a mural and a mosaic. You still don't know, do you? No. Who we'll plays the violin, I wonder? It's pretty dusty, so I'm guessing nobody. One old wooden bookcase. Yep. Twenty-five dry old books. Mm-hmm. Four lit candles. Yeah. Am I the only one seeing the problem? All right, you got your wish. Spooky murder mansion? Spooky murder mansion. It's one of those big pianos with the open lids. Don't touch it. Why not? Might be haunted. Are you a ghost? Sally! That's rude! Unless she is a ghost. It may come as a disappointment, but I am alive. Ah. Uh, that makes you a suspect, I'm afraid. I know. What's your name? My name is Poppy. I'm a pointer. And a pianist. We'll need to ask you a few questions about Freya. I know. Hey, you're pretty good. All in the wrist. And 13 years of dedicated practice. I'm just me. There's nothing to know. How are you related to the other pointers? My father is Percival Pointer. The professor spends most of his time hidden away in his tower. Barely speaks to anyone these days. Especially not the fellows. Do you get on with the fellows? Two of them. Fifi and Freya are my closest friends. We all turned 19 last year. Do people ever leave Tangle Tower? I don't mean to be rude. It's just, if you're 19... You don't have to answer that, Poppy. It's a fair question. I'd like to move away. Definitely. Fifi, Freya, and I would often talk about it. Argue about it. Freya wanted to leave, but Fifi... Things are more complicated for her. What about now? After what happened, I really don't want to stay here much longer. Three and a half hours of piano practice. Soon as I wake up. Same as always. Three and a half? Does that not hurt your hands? Sure. And you do this in the music room? No, I prefer to practice in my room. When I make mistakes, I like to make them in private. What did you do after that? I was supposed to meet Fifi in the library, but I totally forgot. When I finally got down there, she'd already gone. I checked her bedroom, but it was locked. Was Fifi not in there? No idea. She keeps her door locked either way. So I went back upstairs and out into the moonlight garden. 
The what? The little garden on the roof outside my room. Was it just you up there? No. Fitz came outside after a while. His room's on the other side. He's been teaching me about flowers. So, did you talk to him? Not really. You ignored each other. I didn't say that. Fitz and I were up in the moonlight garden most of the afternoon. Then we heard this sound. It lasted about three seconds. I've been trying to decide how to describe it, but I'm struggling. It was like something drilling into a piece of metal, but different. Worse. I was pretty sure it was coming from Flora's tower, so we went up there to check. Her door was locked. Nobody was answering. I knew Freya and Flora were both supposed to be in there, so I made Fitz kick down the door. I went inside. Freya was lying on the floor. Flora was in the room too? Yeah. I think she realized what had happened at the same moment I did. I didn't know what to do. So I ran downstairs to get Fifi. Her door was still locked, but I knocked and shouted at her. Eventually she let me in. The lights were off, but I could see she'd already been crying. I told her what had happened. She didn't believe me. She got angry. First time I've ever seen her angry. I dragged her out into the hall. My father was there too, for some reason. The three of us went back up to Flora's tower. Then Felix arrived. He had Penny with him. Fifi had this idea. She wanted to do some kind of scientific test. She took me down to the library. We were in there about 15 minutes. After she was done, she went back upstairs and I went back to my room. That's it? That's it. All right, Poppy's bedroom is unlocked. I wonder what's in there. book about birds. That's been left open. Looks like somebody was halfway through reading it. Or it was left open for us to find. Ever so slightly unnerving? Floor. Fundamental entomology. Hmm. I guess somebody dropped it. Books about ancient history, I think? These books are ancient history. I think they'd crumble into dust if I tried to pick them up. Good excuse. Thanks. Books about geography. Skip. Books about insects. Well, theoretically. There's not a single book on that shelf. Huh. Books about space. They're relatively untouched. Is that a snow globe? Of sorts. Hey, look at that. It's a model of Tangle Tower. There's a lake and those weird mountains. What are you thinking? That would make an amazing souvenir. Uh, what's in those bottles? I'm not sure. Soil samples? Books about birds. The shelves are about half empty. Oh, so you're a the shelves are half empty kind of person. You knew this already. Books about nature? A chalkboard. Is this a library or a classroom? Math equations... Don't look at them for too long. 
you'll give yourself a headache. Any idea what this means? Not a clue. I'm not sure I learned anything from that. It's musty in here. What exactly does that mean? What is must? Must. You ask such stupid questions. Nice. Curious. I would expect bacteria of that nature to thrive in these conditions. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Taking all the environmental factors into account, there must be something I am still missing. Uh, may I talk to you, miss? She knows we're here. She just doesn't care. I am a detective, and I need to talk- Correction. You do not need to talk to me. Oh no? How come? Because I am not a suspect. I am completely innocent of any and all crimes. Thanks for letting me know. Speaking of which, you have now been at Tangle Tower for over 23 minutes. Surely you have already reached a sturdy hypothesis. A hypothesis? About the murder? Yeah, come on, Grimoire, hurry up. My apologies. Unfortunately, protocol dictates I must at least meet all the suspects. And that includes you. So, uh, could you tell me your name? Fifi Fellow. Microbiologist, inventor, innovator. You will need to be more specific. One's self cannot be summarized in a single response without doing one a great disservice. So true. Well, first of all, you're a fellow. So does that make you the daughter of- Correct. My father and mother are named Flora and Felix, but you need not question either of them. It will only waste valuable time. Neither of them are capable of murder. Thanks for the tip. Fifi, you said you were a micro... something, rather? Microbiologist. But it is an insignificant label. My studies cannot be categorized in any one recognized field. What made you want to become a scientist in the first place? I harbor an intrinsic fascination with the microscopic. I constructed my first one at age 10. Constructed... a microscope? Correct. And what's that thing on your head? Did you make that too? My eyesight began to deteriorate when I turned 12. Not satisfied with the eyeglasses prescribed to me, I designed this custom lens instead. It automatically adjusts based on the surrounding light conditions. Does it glow red when you get angry? No. But that would be most amusing. What can you tell me about the murder? What can you tell me about- Wait, that's what I'm supposed to ask you. Yes. However, you were too slow. You fancy yourself a detective too, Fifi. I just need to know what happened. Me too. So talk. Fine. I knew ahead of time that Freya was going to be busy with her painting all day, so I had planned to spend the afternoon with Poppy. I was in the library all morning preparing the equipment for an experiment, only to find out that Poppy had made other plans and she was in fact planning to ignore me completely. Oh. So what did you do instead? I locked myself in my room and cried. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Why? I don't know, it just sounds kind of sad. It is not unusual. Oh. Good. I was in my room. The lights were off and the door was locked. Someone began banging on the door. I ignored it. Until the someone began shouting at me. I opened the door. Poppy came into my room. Her makeup was leaking. She told me Freya was dead. I did not believe it. I thought she was playing a trick on me, so I punched her in the face. She insisted that we go up to Flora's tower. We left the room, and Poppy's father was waiting outside. He followed us upstairs. When I saw Freya lying on the floor, I was completely and utterly devastated. Then, I took a sample of the red paint on the unfinished painting. Poppy and I took the sample back downstairs to the library. We performed a test and found out that it was, in fact, blood. You performed that scientific test immediately, even though you were feeling so upset? Of course. Why would one affect the other? Fifi's bedroom should be unlocked now. Can't wait.
Check out that butterfly. Looks evil. Wow, judgmental. What's with those little windows down there? I think they're there for draining rainwater. Oh. My little writing desk. It's kind of cute. There's nothing written in the book, although someone's torn a page out of the middle. They're bird cages, but the birds are coming and going freely. Is that a metaphor? Oh, it totally is. I don't like mirrors. They steal your soul. How do you get your hair so symmetrical without using a mirror? I do by weight. I can feel if one side is heavier than the other. I feel like I'm standing in a giant bird cage. An especially fancy cage. And it's home to three especially fancy birds. What is it? Huh? Sort of a delicate jade, but with a little seafoam green, is that right? Sorry? Your hair, dear! Which shade do you use? It's lovely! And that shape... You're really pushing the envelope. Oh, thanks. I do what I can to offset Grimoire's beige on brown ensemble. Detectives don't need to be brightly colored. We prefer to blend into the background. You're the detective? Delightful. Penny Pointer, pleasure. Is that short for Penelope? Officially, yes, but I never can be bothered with all four syllables of it. Penelope sounds a little ostentatious coming out of the mouth, don't you think? Uh, sure. Yeah. Twenty-something, Aquarius, love to travel, and nearly all of my friends are birds. Travel? Where to? Anywhere at all, as long as it has species worth studying. Ornithology, they call it. I call it the only thing I've ever been good at. And have you studied the birds here at Tangle Tower? <laughs> but of course! Where else do you think I developed my love of the field? No matter where I go, I always find myself coming home to Tangle Tower. Because of the birds? Oh, no, because of him! Silly to admit, but I suppose I can't bear for us to be apart. Who are you talking about? Hmm? Oh, don't you know? My fiancé, dear Fitz. He's not really the traveling type, you see. Fitz Fellow. The very one. You're engaged to a member of the Fellow family? That's interesting. Hmm. I'm not especially interested in whatever tedious feuding goes on between our two families. Fitz and I find it much easier to stay out of it altogether. I awoke early and headed down into the greenhouse to see Fitz. He's always there, crack of dawn, every morning like clockwork. How come? It's where he's happiest. That and he has a great deal of work to do every day, watering, pruning, mulching, whatever that is. Do you help him with the work in the greenhouse? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> I'd probably break something. So, you stayed with Fitz the whole day? No. In the early afternoon, he went back inside. Rather suddenly, as it happens. Did he say why? He didn't. Probably just a touch of heat stroke, the poor dear. He's more delicate than you'd think. What did you do after that? Let's see. I returned to the aviary to feed my birds. And how many birds are you responsible for? Officially four, but in truth it's more like 400. Can they not feed themselves? Of course, and they often do, but I think they just like the company. As do I. Sometime in the evening, I left the aviary and headed back towards my room, but... In the hall, I spotted Uncle Pointer heading down the stairs. He was muttering something. Seemed a bit upset, the poor dear. I followed him down, but the grand hall was empty by the time I got there. Empty aside from Detective Hawkshaw, who was loitering over by the library. I don't know what it was, but 
She looked a little lost. I inquired about the professor, and she told me he'd gone up the fellow tower. I ran up the stairs, hoping to catch up with him, but Felix appeared and blocked my path. For some reason, he was coming out of Fitz's bedroom. He looked rather lost, too. I told him I was looking for Uncle. He suggested we look up in Flora's tower room. We could see from the hallway. The door was off its hinges. I knew then something was terribly wrong. A moment later, we were gazing down on the body of poor Freya. Uncle Pointer was there. Fitz, too. Standing over in the corner with Fifi and Poppy. What about Flora? Of course, silent as ever. Uncle suggested we should leave. Give the others some space, you know. So he and I both returned to our rooms in Pointer Tower. We can get into Penny's room now. Now? Like, right now? Even though we're halfway up a tower, someone's been tracking in mud from outside. Painting supplies. Painting supplies. It's a fish, I think? I think it looks more like a whale. Fine, it's a whale. Could also be a shark. Freya's bear. Looks pretty depressed. He's had a rough couple of days. That painting is really something. Why would you want it looming over your bed like that? Maybe Freya enjoy the atmosphere it creates. The atmosphere of chaos and oppression? Hang on. There is a smaller version down by the floor. It's a photograph. Why would you want it looming over your bed like that? Maybe Freya enjoy the atmosphere it creates. The atmosphere. Hang on, there is a smaller it's version. It's a photograph. It's a little wooden box for paintbrushes. To the casual observer, maybe. They're not real paintbrushes. Looks like they're part of some kind of lock mechanism. Neat. What was in the box? Just a photograph. Well, most of a photograph. Freya's plants. They must not need sunlight? A pillow with a paw print pattern. It's a cushion. Yeah, but that doesn't alliterate. It's Freya's bed. A little bit messy. It's a perfectly healthy amount of messy. Do you think this was always supposed to be a bedroom? I don't know. It is kind of a weird shape. No windows either.
are not the kind of lamp I choose for my bedroom, but fair enough. It's cool. Looks like old mining equipment or something. It's a little glass box. I think it's a vivarium. Come again? See the leaves and twigs in there? Might have been for keeping insects. That's weird. What did you find in the drawers? Nothing. They're completely empty. don't have eyes, though. That's not a comforting sentence. Looks like nature invited itself in. Rude. It's a birdhouse. Are those real birds? Nope. They're wooden. <sighs> They're using up all the perches. What if a real bird wanted to use it? Got it. I'm impressed. Did the door open? What's in there? That's some flower. There's something weird about it. It just feels out of place. Anything in there? That cheats. That's not even remotely suspicious. Traveling cases. Empty. All of them. little tea set. Looks recently used. One of the cups has tea in it. What's in the other one? Birdseed. A little bedtime reading? Let's see. Romance novels, detective novels, and... What? This one appears to be both. Nice. That bed. It's like something from a fairy tale. Does it feel warm over here, or is it just me? No, you're right. Maybe the bed has some kind of heater. It's not coming from the bed. It's coming from the wall. It's a magnifying glass. How come you don't have one of those? Why? Because I'm a detective? Should I start smoking a pipe, too? You can pull off a pipe. I don't know what that drink is, but I bet it's 99% sugar. I'd read you the ingredients, but there's nothing written on the can. That's even worse. What's that big book on the desk? Looks like something Fifi's been writing. Is it a clue? I hope not. It's just a bunch of notes about her microbiology experiments. It looks like a microscope. A big one. Can I touch it? Uh, 
I'm not sure this is a microscope. That's the one. Hey, not bad. Sounds like it unlocked. Yeah, it's built on top of a little metal box. There's a book in here. A pretty ornate window with a great view of the lake. We're supposed to be looking for clues, not assessing the real estate value. And over here, you'll see the owners use sheets of paper to block out all that unnecessary natural light. A simple trick, but it really transforms the space. Stuff Fifi's thrown away. You gonna rummage through the trash can? No, that is quite beneath me, thank you. I give it five minutes before you're in there. That's a whole lot of books. Scientific formulas. Probably. I'll openly admit I have no idea what any of it means. Fifi's got something pinned up here. What is all this? Arrows connecting all the different suspects. They're not labeled, though. Yeah, they're completely meaningless. Is Fifi trying to solve the mystery with math equations? Maybe. Did you ever try that? Maybe it works. Is that supposed to be me? Why do I look so angry? That's just the face you make when you're thinking. It does make you wonder, though. When did Fifi draw all this? And that's you, Sally. What? I do not look like that, do I? Did you notice who isn't on here? Freya? Mm-hmm. And Fifi herself. A new suspect! Don't think you can get out being questioned just because you're a bear. I'm innocent, I promise! Save it for the judge. It's a bed. Barely. Crystal chandeliers. Extra fancy. I don't know. They just seem old-fashioned to me. Plus, they're kind of dusty. A lamp. It is most definitely turned off. Anything in the wardrobe? Dresses, mostly. I never realized there are so many shades of black. Just a bunch of clothes on the floor. Nothing weird about that. To you. That is the bed of a vampire. I thought vampires slept in coffins. This is a vampire who needs firm support for their lower back. More handwritten sheet music. Ah, yes, a giant symbol drawn in chalk on the floor. 
Always a good omen. It's an eye. Anything in the drawers? Nothing you need to know about. A single red rose. How very traditional. Yeah, weird. Oh, thank goodness, there are seven lit candles. Wouldn't want it to be dark in here. It's a metronome for keeping time. It's ticking. Is it a bomb? It's supposed to be ticking. Not sure what those symbols are, though. Perfect. What happened? A little hatch unlocked in the back. Anything in there? Mm-hmm. It's a photograph. Part of a photograph. about that pink cassette tape. Something suspicious. Let's ask Poppy about it. It's an octopus. No, it's not. It has six legs, not eight. Don't say it. Sextopus. Various handmade posters. What do you think those symbols mean? Hopefully, nothing. There's a name for this kind of piano. You know, these ones that stand upright. <sighs> a big glass door leads out into a garden. Somehow, there's a little mechanism by the handle. Nothing. Still locked. All four tiles have a moon symbol. Those other symbols look like suns. Surely that's something to do with it? I think it is, but in an abstract kind of way. Nope. It's not budging. Maybe the information we need isn't here. So where is it? Somewhere else. I guess we'll come back later. Sheet music. It's only a few notes. I'd barely even call that music. Yeah, it's been framed though. Must be important for some reason. I need to confirm something with you, Poppy. Confirm away. 
What can you tell us about this cassette tape? Is it yours? Uh, it belongs to Freya. She liked to have music playing while she was painting, you know. And do you know what kind of music is on this tape? No idea. Acid jazz? It's piano music. Sounds an awful lot like your music, to be honest. Sure it doesn't belong to you? Why are we even talking about this? Cassette tapes have been redundant for a good few years now. The tape was found at the crime scene. It was in the gramophone. It's not mine. I'd never own anything like that. Why not? Not my color. You used to like these colors. <sighs> Ridiculous. We need a clue to compare with the cassette tape. Something that proves Poppy used to like these colors. Let's take a closer look at this. found at the crime scene matches the pink cassette player used by Poppy in this old photo. That is not me. Yeah, it is. I'll prove it. You look a little different, but Fifi and Freya are pretty recognizable. It's clearly a photo of you with your two best friends. Why'd you tear it up and then hide it? I think the answer is pretty straightforward. Poppy doesn't want to look like that anymore. That's it. Makes this whole thing seem kind of irrelevant. Maybe. It depends on the reason. The reason she doesn't want to look like that anymore? The passage of time is a powerful thing. Hold on. This means that pink cassette tape does belong to you, Poppy. It used to. I recorded some piano music onto it and gave it to Freya as a gift. Years ago. Freya could have easily been listening to this tape at the exact moment she was killed. There's gotta be a connection between the tape, the gramophone, and the murder. There's one other thing I want to know. How did it get that crack down the middle? I have no idea. hand-painted statue. How can you tell it's hand-painted? Well, the paints are right there on the desk. Also, I mean, no offense, but you can just tell. The entire room is made of wood. No, it's not just made of wood. I think it's the actual hull of a ship. What is it? He's an imp. What does he do? Well, if you tell too many lies, he appears at the end of your bed in the middle of the night. Oh. It's a barometer, but it's broken. I've never seen a barometer that wasn't broken. It's a drinking horn. Is it full of ale? Or mead, maybe? 
Right now, it's just full of dust. Oh. Nice. A real treasure chest. How do you know there's treasure in there? Why else would it be locked? Plus, there's a treasure map hanging directly above it. What's the deal with that painting on the front? Not sure. We should check that treasure map, too. in the box. More wooden models. These are a little different to the one on the desk. Earth. If Earth was made of paper and gave off a gentle pink light. Buffer fish? Yes, it's also a lamp, for some reason. It's a magic lamp. Can we summon the genie? If we get really stuck, sure. That's a massive conch shell. Do you think there's a little crab living inside? I hope so. A hammock. It's kind of worn out. I would politely describe it as lived in. Shelf junk. An old wooden mask. Probably cursed. Sir? Can you hear me? I'm Private Detective Grimoire. I have some questions for you. Grimoire. Good mysterious name. <laughs> I'd rather like it. Felix Fellow at your beck and call. And, uh, this is my colleague, Sally. Yeah, that's a perfectly good name as well. Thanks. If you would, Mr. Fellow, we really need to ask you about the murder. Well, I must say I'm rather jealous of you two. Oh, yeah? Why's that? Out here solving mysteries, <laughs> exploring new places, uncovering secret rooms, hidden treasures. That's what life is all about. Secret rooms? Uh, generally speaking, you know, that sort of thing. So, Felix, what exactly do you uh, do? Is it not obvious? I'm an explorer. Explorer slash treasure hunter is, well, best in the world. We're talking like curse statues, spike pits. Uh, it's a little more sophisticated than that. But I have certainly seen my share of danger, if that's what you're asking. And, uh, if I may ask, uh, when did you retire? Uh, you listen here. <laughs> I may be between ventures right now. But it's simply not in my nature to stay in one place for too long. I go wherever the winds of destiny take me. Don't you live here with your wife and daughter? Yes, well, the fellow family has certain loyalties. And with uh, Flora the way she is... Uh, Nothing wrong with raising a family, Mr. Fellow. <clears throat> Don't misunderstand me. Fiona and Flora are my entire world. They... The greatest treasure of all. Uh huh. Well, why on earth would you want to know about that? The murder of Freya Fellow. The reason we're here. Ah, right. Uh, nasty business. Uh, very unfortunate. 
<clears throat> I, I regret that I can't be of any help, uh, but I wish you all the best in your investigation. Hear that, Grimoire? We're done here. Let's go. It's a simple question, Felix. Well, I'm sure you're up to it. I just... it's... Well, there's not much to tell. Uh, mostly, I was in my room by myself, uh, working on Flora's... Uh, uh, working uh, on a project. <laughs> Your room is quite close to Flora's tower. You didn't hear anything unusual? What qualifies as unusual? What have you got? It was dusk. A feeling lingered in the air. Malevolent, perhaps. Uncertain <laughs> as life itself. Abridged version, please. Right, fine. I heard someone heading down the stairs, just outside my room. The footsteps were calm, orderly, so I thought nothing of it. Shortly afterward, I heard a second set of footsteps going the same way. This time I could tell just from the sound that something was wrong. So I looked out into the hallway. I got a glimpse of Poppy disappearing down the staircase to the floor below. I didn't know what to make of it, to be honest. I thought perhaps she'd had a disagreement with Fitz, as I know those two are close. So I looked into his room, just in case, but it was empty, as was the garden beyond his window. Back in the hallway, I bumped into a very concerned-looking Penelope. She was heading up Fellow Tower to find Professor Pointer, so I escorted her. We went into Flora's room. Poor Freya was laying on the floor. Fiona, Poppy, Fitz, and Pointer were there already. Flora, too, of course. <laughs> Soon enough, everyone else made their excuses and left. Including you? Not I. <laughs> I stayed. Flora needed me. Spyglass to the Stars, Volumes 1 to 12. They're in very good condition. Uh, it's too cloudy to see any stars right now. It's also daytime. Pretty. There's something kind of disappointing about this room. I just expected a bit more from an astronomy tower. Oh, does it not compare to all the other astronomy towers you've been to? You know, I've always wanted one of those. A mechanical solar system? What would you do with it? I would look at it. Wait a minute. Earth in the middle, sun on the outside. How old is this thing? Did you hear that? Something unlocked. There's a little hatch underneath? What's in there? A bunch of paper. Looks like somebody's research. Huh, 
is tidier than my desk. Oh, the notebook is untouched. It's completely blank. So? Even the most well-used notebooks start off blank. A picture frame. With no picture. It's full of tea, but it's gone cold. Criminal. Shh, listen. Do you hear them? The stars. They're whispering. So quiet, and yet so loud. What are they whispering about? Are they spreading rumors about us? I shouldn't think they concern themselves with such insignificance. We are but specks of dust, you and I. Mm-hmm. Could the speck of dust start by telling me his name? You find yourself standing in the astronomy tower of one Professor Percival Pointer. Hmm. Seems like this tower belongs to the Pointers, and the other one belongs to the Fellows. Well observed, my dear. Tangle Tower is something of a duality, as it happens. Uh, meaningless boundaries, really. They exist only in our minds. Helpful. Me? Not much to say. Strictly speaking, I'm the current head of the Pointer family. And, of course, father to my precious poppy. And? A professional astronomer? Oh, no, that's just a little hobby. I mean, yes, I've studied the stars for over 35 years, published 17 books. Just a little hobby. Sounds like you're quite well known. You must bring in a good amount of money. Oh, dear me, no. My field of research has never yielded any kind of stable financial return. Nor would I expect it to. I am nothing but a humble interpreter for the cosmos, working to translate its message so that I may share it with the world. Cool. Tell the cosmos I say hi. The day began as any other, with blissful, unremarkable routine. I took my usual morning walk around the gardens. Fresh air does wonders for the mind. Did you see anyone else? Penelope and Fitz were in the greenhouse together. I didn't bother them, of course. I sat for a while besides the pond in the garden. It's a favorite spot of mine. Eventually, I returned to my tower and buried myself in my studies for the afternoon. Did you use your telescope yesterday? Once the stars began to appear, naturally. For how long? I can't say. I've been known to lose hours at my telescope. Did you see anything? No actual discoveries, if that's what you mean. So you were all alone up in the astronomy tower. Must have been a while before you found out what had happened to Freya. Quite. Normally, I would be the last to find out about such a thing. But a curious tug of fate led me towards the fellow tower later that evening. I was at my telescope for the majority of the evening, but at one point I returned to my desk to look something up in a reference book. I couldn't find the book I wanted, so I figured Fiona must have borrowed it. I left my tower and headed down towards the Grand Hall. I spotted Detective Hawkshaw coming out of the library. She looked impatient and slightly frustrated. Same as ever, then? Quite. I passed her by and went upstairs to Fiona's room. The door was locked, but I could hear shouting coming from inside. I recognized Fiona's voice as well as the voice of my own daughter. I had no desire to invade their privacy by eavesdropping, so I waited for them to finish and come out into the hall. Before I could ask about the book, Poppy grabbed my hand and took me upstairs along with Fiona. It was apparent that both of them had already been crying about something. We went up to Flora's tower. Freya was laying on her back right in the middle of the room. Flora and Fitz were already there. They both looked stoic as ever. Felix and Penny arrived shortly after we did, and then Fiona went downstairs with Poppy for some reason. I quickly decided that I should leave also. I took Penelope with me, and we both went back to our rooms in Pointer Tower. Why did you leave so quickly? Wasn't there anything you could have done to help? Don't take this the wrong way, but the whole ordeal is fellow family business. I I'm quite sure they don't need me getting in the way at a time like that. That's all the statements. Let's go over them all.
that's all the statements collected. Let's run through them all to see if anything doesn't add up. To see if anyone's been lying. That too. Fitz and I were up in the Moonlight Garden most of the afternoon. Then we heard this sound. Lasted about three seconds. We thought it was coming from Flora's tower, so we went up there. Her door was locked. Nobody was answering. So I made Fitz kick down the door. Poppy and I went in. Freya was right there, laying on her back. I left my tower and headed down towards the Grand Hall. But in the hall, I spotted Uncle Pointer heading down the stairs. I vacated the library, but before I could begin my ascent, Professor Pointer appeared. I didn't know what to do, so I ran downstairs to get Fifi. I heard someone heading down the stairs, just outside my room. Someone began banging on the door. I ignored it, until the someone began shouting at me. Eventually, she let me in. I spotted Detective Hawkshaw coming out of the library. He emerged from the pointer staircase, crossed the hall, and begun up the fellow staircase. As I was passing through the front door, Penelope called out from behind me. I inquired about the professor, and she told me he'd gone up the fellow tower. I told her what had happened. She didn't believe me. She got angry. I thought she was playing a trick on me, so I punched her in the face. I recognized Fiona's voice, as well as the voice of my own daughter. We left the room, and Poppy's father was waiting outside. He followed us upstairs. I ran up the stairs, hoping to catch up with him, but Felix appeared and blocked my path. Back in the hallway, I bumped into a very concerned-looking Penelope. She was heading up Hello Tower to find Professor Pointer. So I escorted her. Poppy left the room for a while. When she came back, she had her father with her, and Fifi, too. Felix and Penny arrived shortly after we did. A moment later, we were gazing down on the body of poor Freya. Then, I took a sample of the red paint on the unfinished painting. She took me down to the library. We were in there about 15 minutes. I quickly decided that I should leave also. I took Penelope with me, and we both went back to our rooms in Pointer Tower. I wanted to go back to my room, but I realized nobody had told Detective Hawkshaw anything. An unremarkable hour passed before the gardener finally made his appearance. I think she was annoyed about being made to wait outside so long, but when I told her about Freya, she fell silent. That's disappointing. What is? All the statements line up with each other. They don't just line up. Some of them even seem to specifically confirm each other. Oh, wow. What? It's a big empty space. An empty glass and an empty plate. Looking at it is making me want to cry. Why? I don't know. It's a little handmade card. Someone's drawn a heart on the front. Inside it says, To Fitz, from PP. That poor plant. Looks pretty healthy to me. Healthy, but sad. I think it would rather be outside. Ah, uh, there's someone outside the window. Something outside the window. It's probably just a rock. You sure? Doesn't look soft. Hello. Not hidden very well, is it? Doesn't need to be. It's locked. It's a combination lock. Sort of.
did it. What do I win? Not bad. Anything in there? Yeah, it's wrapped in a cloth. Hold on. Huh, that's kind of ominous. It's locked, but it leads outside. I thought we were halfway up a tower. We are. What's that thing by the handle? It made a noise. I guess that was right. And the door's still locked. I still feel like we made some sort of progress. A big glass door leads out into a garden. Somehow, there's a little mechanism by the handle. Something happened. That must be it. Finally, it's open. Whatever's on the other side better be worth it. It's another little statue, doing a really bad job of hiding in the bushes. He's playing a lute this time. He's also wearing headphones. Well, they're not part of the statue. And they're not headphones. They're earmuffs. It's a rose bush, growing on a little patch of bluish soil. Now, apart from a couple of loose petals on one side, the whole thing looks very well cared for. The roses are bright red, too. Now, aren't roses normally that color? Exactly. The door into Poppy's room. So, only Poppy and Fitz can get into the garden? Ah. I guess so. That's one big dragonfly. Or one very small dragon. It's the door into Fitz's room. One of only two ways to get into the garden. Oh yeah. Giant stone frog? Love it. Nah, he's got his tongue out like he's catching snowflakes. Except those aren't snowflakes. They're feathers. Ah, a little water feature. It's making me sleepy. Wonder how it's hooked up. A little pond. It looks really, really deep for some reason. See those metal bars around the edges too? Oh yeah. What are you supposed to have for? Nothing anymore. Looks like somebody broke them and then never bothered to fix it. Oh good, a bridge. I'm glad to know there's a way to get across that tiny, tiny pond. Not all bridges are about getting across stuff. Every astronomy tower needs a telescope. I want to try.
You can see right into Flora's room. Not by accident. I can see Flora, but she's not looking this way. She's looking up. Behind her is the back side of the easel holding Freya's unfinished painting. I can't really see anything behind it. Not from this angle. It's that little plant Flora keeps on the window ledge. Don't you think it would fall off I in the wind? Maybe it's glued down. Is that a window? I think it is. Is there another room above Flora's room? We should check that next time we're over there. Isn't this supposed to be an astronomy telescope? I'm pretty sure you need to see the sky for astronomy to work. I can't move it. I think this is just how it's set up. a statue of a wolf, standing up straight, like a man. You know there's a name for that. I know. It's not quite as dusty as everything else up here. Also, it's not a statue. It's stuffed. Just dusty junk. What's in that little box? I bet it's bones. A skull, at least. You know, maybe I won't open it. What is that? Not sure. Some kind of reel? Looks like it might attach to something. Where's that light coming from? Well, it's just daylight, I think. There's a decent gap between those floorboards. Is that what I think it is? Is that what I think it is? up on the wall. What's that one on the left? Looks like two people standing together in a garden. One of them's holding a red rose. So, we found some research. What's up with this golden beetle? Is this something you're studying? I can't help you, I'm afraid. I think it must be something left behind by a previous inhabitant of Tangle Tower. I'm not the first scientist to ever walk these halls, you know. Well, it wasn't in the halls. It was in your astronomy tower. something about Pointer's astronomy habits. Something suspicious. Let's ask him about it. Trinkets. Uh, they're clearly gizmo. So, Professor, what 
interests you about astronomy exactly? It's not a matter of being interested. Once you expand your mind to the wider universe, it cannot be unexpanded. Mm hmm. And how long have you been an astronomer? I really don't like to give exact values unless I'm sure I can quantify them. Convenient. Why do you ask me these things? I have a theory about you, Professor. Oh? Go on. You're not really interested in astronomy at all. What could you possibly mean by that? I think you're interested in a slightly different field of research. I don't have time for tiny, insignificant insects. My studies focus only on the inconceivably large and the unimaginably far away. Right. That's why you like using your telescope so much. Yes, naturally. My little portal into another world. Yeah, about that. Pointer's telescope was actually looking at the crime scene and not up at the sky. First you accuse me of being a lowly entomologist. Now you're accusing me of, uh, what, spying? Are you spying? Why would I need to spy on Flora? Why? Because you lost your golden beetle specimen and it's made you paranoid. You think somebody stole it from you. Might not have been Flora you were spying on. Might have been Freya. It's... you... it's a very precious specimen! Incredibly rare! Valuable in ways you could never understand. Freya was always sneaking around, both towers and in the gardens too. She was definitely up to something. So, this next question is important. You were looking to Flora's room around the time of the murder. Did you witness the crime, Professor? No, I didn't. When I looked into the room, Flora was already lying on the floor. Flora? You mean Freya? No, Flora. She was lying by the window. I couldn't see Freya at all. It was fairly dark. The telescope isn't at a very good angle. That's why I decided to head over there myself. I needed to know what was going on. This changes your statement, doesn't it? No, everything I told you in my statement was true. Apart from the reason you left your tower in the first place. Right. Who was reading this book? It belongs to my mother. And she left it in the library? No. My mother has not been in the library for some time. Hmm. Freya is normally highly skilled at capturing someone's likeness. But in this painting, she has accidentally made Flora look quite young. I think she was just being kind. Why is that kind? Anyway, I'm far more interested in what Flora is holding. I performed the test on the red paint myself. I discovered that it was in fact not paint, but blood. What made you want to test it in the first place? It was Poppy. She told me she thought the painting looked like a bloody knife. I told her not to be ridiculous. My mother owns no such knife. But then I noticed that the color was slightly too dark, and the substance itself was overly viscous. You noticed that just from looking at it once? Of course.
What a mess. Penelope should tidy up after herself. Uh, these weren't dropped by Penny. Uh, they were dropped by birds. I think. My argument stands. It is a model of Freya, made by my father. A model of Flora, you mean? And a man with a beard. And a little red and white creature. Why would my father make a model of Freya? carving of my father, made by my father. Although, now that I look at it, I do not understand how he was able to paint the red parts without any red paint. shards of glass all over this statue. What makes you think it was Poppy? The statue lives in the music room. Who else would it be? Uh, I am scared of birds. Why? It is an irrational fear. I have no suitable explanation. Oh. Did you test the red paint in this pot? Yes, I did. I discovered it too was blood, not paint. A whole pot full of blood? Not a whole pot. It is only partially full. Yeah, but still. Doesn't that freak you out? No. In fact, it may be considered rather reassuring. The red paint on the brush is not paint, it is blood. Same for the palette. So Freya added the blood to the painting herself? Or blood got on the brush and palette some other way? I do not know the answer. There is a drawing of me. A drawing of Detective Hawkshaw, and a drawing of po a drawing of Poppy and Fitz. Is this yours, Fifi? I do not recognize it. And besides, I would have no use for such a thing. Perhaps it could be used to hang wet laundry? It... was that a joke? Yes. I believe Freya was attempting to communicate something through this painting. Any idea what it was? I am not the person to ask. All I see is a blood-red mountain with angry storm clouds brewing above it. As such, I cannot ascertain any meaning from it whatsoever. Now this is interesting. Where did you find it? In the astronomy tower. And yet, it does not concern the field of astronomy. Nope. In fact, you could even say that entomology is the exact opposite of astronomy. Yeah, you could. I would not say that, however. Oh, y you wouldn't? No, it would be quite naive. To study science in any field is to study the connections between all matter in the universe, living or inanimate. A book. My book. And what's in it? Pages. The fruit here 
here has a unique chemical makeup. It makes them completely pointless. Unless you wish to cut it down and sell it as a precious stone. It's not edible? Depends. On what? On the structural integrity of your teeth. <laughs> Who is that in the photo? Uh, I'm quite sure that I have no idea. This photograph is my favorite photograph. So, why'd you rip it in half? That was not me. Besides, it was not a half that was ripped off. It was only a third. That belongs to my mother. I think she must be fond of eggs. There are a number of egg-shaped carvings to be found in the garden and in the Grand Hall. Yeah, uh, what's the deal with all the eggs? Some people just like eggs. The gramophone belongs to Poppy, but I believe she gave it to my mother, and my mother often loaned it to Freya. Or maybe it is the other way around. When did it get cracked? I cannot pinpoint it exactly. All I know is that it must have happened sometime in the last two days. <laughs> is she laughing? This belongs to Professor Pointer, does it not? No, I don't think so. Well, who else would own such a pointless little telescope? It's a telescope? Oh, yes. It has a telescopic lens. It can only be used for looking at things that are far away. This belongs to Poppy. In fact, she owns a number of cassette tapes. What happened to it, though? It has been left underwater for an extended period of time. Right. But why? I do not know why. The statue itself does not interest me, but I do wish to know about those symbols on the harp. Have you deciphered their meaning yet? We're working on it. We are? Hmm. Oh, curious. What's wrong? Earmuffs do not go on statues. That blade. Uh, it's a troll for gardening. It is? Who is this her to whom the message refers? Well, I don't know exactly. Then how can I meaningfully evaluate this object? Next! It is a flower. It reminds me of something, but I cannot say what. An item from Poppy's childhood. Her earliest piano lessons hold some special significance for her. Why's that? No idea. She has never graced me with the details, and I am not forthcoming enough to ask. You two are friends, right? We are, yes. But? It is clear to me now that Poppy has become tired of my company. Is it anything to do with Freya? Oh, no. The changes in Poppy's mood have nothing to do with Freya. Her concerns simply lie elsewhere. What do you know? Well, we know Freya was stabbed with a knife, and then she found- Correction. She was stabbed with something. There was no knife found at the crime scene. Apart from the one in the painting. Which, as a mere abstract representation, does not count. Nobody has ever been stabbed by the concept of a knife. What is your opinion of Tangle Tower? Well, it's impressive. Elaborate gardens. Unique architecture? Must be worth a fortune. Why do you ask, Fifi? I am the heir of the Fellow family and the Remington family. This makes me the sole beneficiary of Tangle Tower. That's quite an inheritance. They can't make you do anything, Fifi. If you don't want the house, just tell them. Or just sell it. Who cares? You sound like her.
Name, Flora Fellow. Age, 44. Profession, unknown. Likes, unknown. Dislikes, unknown. Uh, isn't she your mother? How do you not know anything? I believe other people may have discovered methods of reaching her, but I have little capacity for interpreting non-verbal communication. And how long has Flora been... Uh, non-verbal? She has always been quiet. Willing to speak when necessary, but not more. So what happened to make her stop talking entirely? She suffered a great loss. Something she has been unable to move beyond. Name, Felix Fellow. Age, 53. Profession, none. Likes, collecting objects of negligible monetary value and assigning them personal value. Dislikes, the inescapable realities of human existence. Notes, Felix is my father and legal guardian. And, uh, is he a good dad? I have no point of comparison, but I would say no. No? Why not? You asked me a binary question. Do not get upset that I provided one of the two possible answers. What makes him a bad father, Fifi? He has trouble expressing his emotions, and something of a willful detachment from reality. Huh. Just like you, then. Grimoire. No, no. He is quite correct. Name. Fiona Fellow. Age. 19. Profession. Amateur microbiologist. Likes. The meaningful archiving of information. Dislikes. The superfluous window dressing accompanying the majority of human contact. Notes. Kindly disregard the polysyllabic form of my given forename and refer to me instead as Fifi. How come you prefer Fifi? How come you prefer Grimoire? How are you related to the other fellows? Fitz is my cousin. His father, a man named Flint, was my uncle. Was? I do not know if Flint is alive or not. He left Tangle Tower a long time ago. And what about Freya? How are you related to her? We share exactly one grandparent. Name, Hawkshaw. Age, unknown. Profession, private detective. Likes, quote, being left alone. Dislikes, quote, being constantly badgered by a weirdo nerd with a clipboard. Name, Freya Fellow. Age, 19. Profession, artist. Deceased. Understand this. Most people find me difficult. They exhibit a noticeable degree of discomfort when talking to me. Uh... There it is. Freya, who had a way of being an exception to any given rule, was not at all like this. She is very important, and I will not rest until I understand what has happened to her. Did you spend a lot of time with Freya recently? I will say this. In the past year, Freya became one increasingly independent, and two, increasingly isolated. Do you know why? I do not. If you are looking for a speculative, empathetic opinion, try asking Poppy instead. The three of you are friends. We are of a similar age, and all highly gifted. One scientist, one artist, and one musician. Sounds like quite a team. Name, Fitzfellow, age, 24, profession, Cryptobotanist. Likes soil, dislikes electric lights. Hang on. Cryptobotanist? I thought he was just a gardener. That may well be his preferred label. Mine, however, is more accurate. Do you and Fitz not see eye to eye, Fifi? We do not. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. He's well over six foot and you've got to be just barely five. So what's your problem with him? Exactly one week ago, I witnessed him sneaking up Pointer Tower. He was making every effort to avoid detection. So? He was also carrying a knife. Name, Percival Pointer. Age, 57. Profession, none. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's an astronomer. Oh yes, of course. 
How uncharacteristically forgetful of me. Name, Penelope Pointer. Age, 27. Profession, ornithologist. Likes, birds. Dislikes, insects. Notes, Penelope is very beautiful. I have never had very much in common with her. Name, Poppy Pointer. Age, 19. Profession, it, oh. Apparently, Poppy has defaced my notes. Under profession, I had of course originally written pianist, but she has crossed that out and written the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You've seen these before? Yes. All of them? Even this one of- Yes. Oh, there used to be all kinds of birds here at Tangle Tower. The most fascinating breeds, all totally unique. Used to be? Uh, there are birds all over the place. Most of them are rather ordinary, I'm afraid. What happened to the non-ordinary ones? That is a very good question. Hmm, if I'm not mistaken, that little red and white one is supposed to be a bird of some kind. I must say, the girls are awfully well behaved today. I think they know we're in the presence of company. They belong to you? Why do you keep them in a cage? They need a special diet, particular treatment. I let them out to fly occasionally, of course. Uh, but they're all one of a kind. I, I, I couldn't let anything happen to them. Do they have names? Of course. Let me introduce you to Tabitha, Tamara, and Tatiana. I've already forgotten all three of those names. Which one is which? Oh, that's simple. Tatiana is the oldest, Tabitha is the most patient, and Tamara has the best sense of rhythm. Glad we cleared that up. What about the one on your head? On my head? He's just my hat. He doesn't have a name. Who would name their hat? Somebody taking an interest in extinct animals. Extinct? Oh, yes. The book is very old. Most of the birds in it are long gone. Well, what about this bird, though? The ink dip. This one? Well, it was thought to be extinct for a long time. Then one was found here at Tangle Tower. So it's not extinct. Uh, you misunderstand. It was the last one. The very last. Oh. Gaudy old thing, isn't it? Flora seems very fond of it. I've never understood why. But then I could say the same thing about her husband. Heyo! Is that for sewing? Maybe. We have no idea. Hmm. Lovely. Oh, did Fitch show you that? Not exactly. We found it hidden under his bed. Ah, right. Not a fan of insects myself. Whose research is this? We were hoping you might know. No, can't say I... Freya, perhaps. I know she was always very fond of grubby little things like this. Noted.
I doubt Freya intended it, but the overall effect is a little unsettling. Don't you think? It's Flora that's the problem. She's an inescapably haunting presence, bless her. Mm. A bit vain to carve wooden figurines of oneself, isn't it? Looks a little simple for Poppy, doesn't it? Thought she was a grade 12 or something. I didn't know there were that many grades. I'm sure they invented some new ones just for her. I can't decide what's worse. How she looks here, or how she looks now. Do you know who this is? In the photo? Oh, absolutely no idea. Ooh, a secret diary. That's our guess, too. Excellent. Yes, it's my, uh, uh, my flower. You don't like it? I'm no good at caring for plants. I forget to water them. Birds are much easier. They're a lot more vocal when they get thirsty. Do you at least like the look of the flower? The look? The colors? The shape of it? Between you and me, I think it's a little vulgar. Hmm. That's, uh, rather strange now, isn't it? We found it in your room. Just lying around, was it? Nope. You'd hidden it, but we found it. We do that. Who's the her in the message? And what's the deal with the petals? It's really none of your business. There's something about those petals we found in Penny's room. Something suspicious. Let's ask her about it. Uh, so, yeah, we found this. Oh, <laughs> that. That's nothing. You wrote, now I'll get her, on a piece of paper and hid it in your room. That's not nothing. Actually, it's not the message I wanted to ask about. It's those red flower petals. The petals? They're from red roses. And there's only one place in Tango Tower with red roses. We need a clue. Something that shows the roses. And who they belong to. It's a drawing of Fitz and Poppy in the rooftop garden. See what Fitz is holding? <laughs> I can't imagine what you're getting at, but it doesn't matter. I couldn't have taken anything from the rooftop garden. It's only accessible from Fitz's room or Poppy's room. How could I have taken something from a garden to which I have no access? Is it really only accessible from those two bedrooms? For most people, it would be. But don't forget, Penny's the resident ornithologist. My dears, what are you accusing me of? was used to spy on Poppy and Fitz and steal evidence from them. We know those two have been spending time together in the rooftop garden. I'm guessing you got paranoid, wanted to know what they were up to. I'm just not the jealous type. I would never suspect Fitz of anything like that. Besides, Tabitha hardly ever leaves her cage. She's certainly never flown up to the rooftop garden. We need a clue to compare with Penny's birds. Something to prove one of them has been in the rooftop garden. Let's take a closer look at these.
This yellow feather was left behind by Penny's yellow bird when it visited the rooftop garden. I can't stand it! Knowing the two of them are hidden away up there in their private little garden. I couldn't risk spying on them myself, so I asked dear Tabitha to do it for me. I knew she'd be able to bring me back some evidence. Sorry, Penny, but are you not overreacting a little? You don't understand. Fitz is slipping away from me. He's so quiet with me these days. But being with Poppy seems to bring him out of his shell. I don't know what he sees in her miserable little... I apologize. This really isn't your burden to bear. That's a very old book, isn't it? Looks like someone could have taken better care of it. I like the look of a well-read book. Better than one that's never been opened. Ah, well put. That's rather a small cage for three birds, isn't it? But then, aren't we all trapped in a cage? These were drawn by Freya. She must have drawn that one of Hawkshaw rather recently. I guess. What's this? Is it a clue? We don't actually know, but Grimoire picked it up, so now he has to pretend it is. That's how it works. I think you may wish to adjust your threshold of what you consider to be a clue. This looks a little rushed, even by Felix's standards. At least he tried. Yes, I suppose it's good for the old fellow to have a hobby. Keeps his mind from decaying, you know. I've seen those earmuffs before. They're the ones Fitz always wears when he's out the front gardening. Always wears? Whenever I've seen him, yes. Oh. You found a murder weapon? Steady on. It's just a gardening trowel. Looks like a weapon to me. This is supposed to be Felix, is it? I think so. I see he's afforded himself considerable artistic license. Oh, my. This is the first piece that Primrose ever learnt on the piano. Uh, Primrose, that is, Poppy's mother. She passed it down to Poppy when she started teaching her how to play. Poppy's piano teacher was her mother? Of course. Warms my heart to know that after everything, Poppy still has it up on her wall. What a precious photograph. She hasn't changed a bit, has she? Who? Oh, if you don't know, perhaps I don't either. A diary can be a wonderful outlet for an outpouring of one's soul. How do you know it's a diary? I suppose I don't, but it does look like a diary. What kind of flower is that? We're not sure. I think it might be the only one of its kind. Primrose would know. My wife was a floriculturalist. Best in the field. That's a flower joke, but she was. Interesting. Well now, that is most definitely none of my business. Quite possibly none of yours, either. Poppy's two closest friends. Freya looks so innocent there. Freya was well acquainted with the abstract, I'll say that much. What does it look like to you? To me? It's a big, red thing. What a fascinating interpretation. He's right, though. It is a big red thing. Curious creature, isn't it? Some sort of amphibious bipedal fish man. Playing a trumpet. 
Playing a trumpet, yes. Fitz seems rather keen to grow things like this in his greenhouse, doesn't he? What's wrong with that? Well, you can't eat it. Makes you wonder why he bothers at all. What's this? It looks like it might be a telescope. Thought you might know something about it. Well, it certainly is a telescope. It has a part there to screw onto a tripod, you see. It's rather small, though. I'm not sure you could see many stars with it. No, probably not. I haven't seen that tape for a long time. Who broke it? No idea. Ah, well. Possessions are fleeting, my friends. Mm. Pointer property originally. Purloined by the fellows. Typical. Curious little thing, isn't it? Do you know what she hi keeps in there? Nothing. At the moment. It was empty when we opened it. How bizarre. Can't a woman keep an empty egg in her room? Is this important? Possibly. Mm. I find that painting to be in rather bad taste. Oh, yeah? The knife with real blood on it? The whole thing is rather vulgar. Here's a thought. Do you suppose the paintbrush could be the murder weapon? After all, it was found at the scene right next to Freya's body. I guess it's possible. Where on earth did you find that? It was in a bush outside. I think someone threw it away. How peculiar. A very old statue indeed. I'd recommend you leave it well alone. The poor fellow's in bad enough shape as it is. Isn't the process of decay fascinating? It's not really decaying. It's plastic. It's becoming one with nature, all the same. Not exactly a wealth of information, is it? It's enough. So, which one is Tangle Tower? What's that? There are two towers, right? Flora's Tower and your Astronomy Tower. Neither? Truly, I have no idea. You'd have to ask Flora. She named the house? The whole thing is a result of her squabbling with her family. With Felix, you mean? Her husband? No, no, her brother and sister, and her father. The Remington family was a rather tumultuous little unit, you see. I don't think Flora has spoken with any of them in over a decade. A listless soul drifting through the ether. What's wrong with her? Not sure. She's always been troubled. Comes from a dysfunctional family. I'd say you could ask her about it, but uh, I think you might find that to be a bit of a dead end. He should learn to make the most of his lot in life. And he does have a lot in life. You're talking about money? Among other things, but yes, he currently has agency over a small fortune. That is, if he hasn't already squandered it, or lost it. You two don't get on? Oh no, we're the best of friends. Ah yes, the heiress of Tangle Tower. Goodness knows what'll happen when she takes charge. I dare say she'll confiscate my telescope and replace it with a microscope. She doesn't seem to be the type to impress her will on others. Still, keep an eye on her. Dangerously intelligent, that one. You sound jealous. Wait, are you two science rivals? Oh no, we operate on very different wavelengths. Literally. Hard to read, that one. But she seems to know what she's doing. She's kind of mean. You know, I simply assumed all detectives were sharp, rigorous, and thorough. Then, of course, I met you. Nobody could deny her talent. She was remarkable, artistically gifted, but also highly intelligent. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive, you know. Was she ever interested in astronomy? I don't 
think she was. The fault may well lie with me for failing to inspire her, but I think she was captivated by more tangible things here on Earth. My daughter loved her. Fiona, too. That said, in the last year or so, more and more I begun to notice her by herself, wandering the gardens at the most peculiar hours. She must have explored every inch of the grounds a hundred times over. Quite a restless spirit, I think. I'm surprised she chose to live at Tangle Tower as long as she did. What do you want me to say? He's the gardener. He's a member of the family. Yeah, but not the Pointer family. What happened to his parents, do you know? His father, Flint, is Felix's brother. Strange man. Don't think anybody knows what happened to him, but he certainly doesn't live here anymore. What about his mother? Emily? I've not met her. She never actually married into the fellow family. Her relationship with Flint was, uh, it was short-lived. I don't especially want to talk about myself. Introspection often leads to vanity. Wait, does it? Why don't we discuss the moons of Jupiter instead? I'm not sure if we have time. Aren't there like 10 of them? 83. Yeah, we don't have time. Ah, Penelope, our resident ornithologist. Penny's your niece, is that right? At this moment in time. Until she marries the gardener. She'll still be your niece. But she'll depart from the world of the Pointers and join the Fellows. Like rats deserting a sinking ship. My poppy, my pride and joy. Exceptionally talented pianist from a young age, she... Hold on, why is she on your list of suspects? Because she's a suspect. Oh no, I can personally vouch for her innocence. She never... Well, the truth is, she loved Freya very dearly. If you don't mind me asking, what happened to Poppy's mother? Primrose? She was Flora's sister, a Remington by birth. The playing field has never really been even since she left. Where did she go? Away. She went away. was very talented, even at that age. Do you know how old this photo is? Not sure. Must be a couple of years at least. Sometime before Fiona settled on her current style. I know a lot of people rather like this painting, but it's a little much for me. I find it overbearing. And for some reason, it makes me feel bad for Freya. I think she was more troubled than we knew. Haven't seen this one in a while. He lives in the music room, doesn't he? Currently. Ooh, delightful. More of a gemstone than a fruit, isn't it? Inedible, too, I think. Yes. At one point, I thought Fitz might be growing them to sell them. But honestly, I think he just likes the way they look. I don't know what that is. Oh, terrible. You recognize it? A color scheme. Three different pinks. Obscene. Poppy's gramophone. She's had it for a long time. As a young child, she'd call it her mama phone, on account of it belonging to her mother. That's cute. Oh yes, adorable. Freya doesn't take very good care of her pains, does she? But then, she was always rather bohemian. Had her own priorities. Oh, that's rather sad. 
Hello. Who penned this juicy little number? We don't know. It's not signed. An anonymous letter? Classic clue. I'm sure I've read about this creature somewhere. Don't remember anything about him playing the harp, though. <laughs> Goodness me. Poppy really doesn't take care of her belongings, does she? It wasn't in Poppy's room. It was in the little pond in the garden. Exactly! Hardly the place for it. <sighs> Finally! I get to see a detective's case file. That's a very specific thing to be excited about. <laughs> well, only last week I asked that miserable hawkshot woman if I could see her case notes. I'm guessing she said no. Would have been much more polite if she had just said no. Instead, she was quite rude to me. Accused me of being, what was it? A shallow sensationalist. You know, it's probably quite impressive. To a visitor, fresh eyes and all that. Not to you? Try living in it for 20 years. <laughs> the sheen wears off. If it wasn't for my fits, I'd have little reason to stay. What about inheritance? You're the next oldest pointer after your uncle, aren't you? Well, thank you very much for phrasing it like that. But no, any money left in the pointer family will pass down directly to Poppy. Is that fair? I couldn't care less, to be perfectly honest. A fellow bird enthusiast. She's quite the expert, truth be told. Studied them professionally at one point. I think her father taught her. Are you friends with Flora? A little bit. A little bit friends. She's one for the peace and quiet. I dare say I'm a little too loud for her. I can see that. I do admire her, though, really. Always felt like she could have done better than settle for Felix. Ouch. I said it. I must say, I really don't care for the den of self-delusion that he's retreated into. People are better off when they just let themselves be themselves. Between you and me, I think Felix is secretly rather miserable. She mostly ignores me, if I'm honest. How come? Well, we're not quite on the same intellectual level. Oh. I mean, well, you, I mean, you don't need to. No, no. It's quite all right. I'm comfortable with it. She's a most unsavory little... <clears throat> she was incredibly rude about my appearance. Which part? The giant bird arms, or...? If I were her, I'd go easy on the judgment of others. I mean, look at her. She looks like the ghost of a scarecrow. I just wish Uncle Pointer would tell her to behave herself. Professor Pointer? Why him? Oh, it was Uncle that called her in. She's his responsibility. Did you not know that? She'd sit in the aviary, first thing in the morning, and paint the birds. Sometimes she'd ask me their names. Freya was interested in studying bird species, too? No, just wanted to know their names. Isabel, Clementine, Myrtle, Lissandre, Genevieve... Got it, thanks. For my 21st birthday, she gave me a framed painting. All the birds from a single spring. With their names written underneath. I can't begin to tell you how much I've treasured it. Sounds like you two were close. I feel like I always struggled to articulate my admiration for her. But she had a way of understanding unspoken things. Isn't he strapping? He is big. And so brooding. Kinda sulky, yeah. I can never tell what's going on in that beautiful head of his. It just sounds like you don't know him very well. I don't remember asking for your input. Can't say I've ever taken an interest in Uncle's astronomy. On occasion, I've dared to visit him in his tower, but I always regret it. It's all just a little too abstract for me. What do you mean? 
Oh, did you know the sun is apparently over 400,000 miles wide? Okay, so what should I do with that information? How does it help me? Don't look at me. You're the one who memorized it. Oh, she's beautiful! <laughs> who is she? Wait, is, is that... Is that me? Oh, <laughs> did you talk to Poppy already? Uh, yeah, a little bit. And did you make any notes of what she told you? Yeah, I did. Lovely. Burn them. It'll all be lies. Why would Poppy lie to us? Because that's what she does. She's a snake. Looks like one, too. Don't you think you're being a little unfair, Penny? She started it! Fitz, one of these drawings is of you, in the rooftop garden, I think, with Poppy. Mm-hmm. Are we done? I don't know what that is. Me neither. Me three. Oh, sorry. I thought you said me too. We found these up in the rooftop garden. Do you know how long they've been there? No. Could have been a long time. We don't ever really clear up the rooftop garden. Why not? Nature is unruly. In truth, it prefers to be left alone. Wait, those are mine, the earmuffs. They went missing about a week ago. What do you need earmuffs for? I use them for gardening sometimes. Why? You don't own a chainsaw, do you? No. I wear them while I'm gardening, and it stops people from trying to talk to me. That's genius. That's quite sweet, really. This is yours, Fitz? Yeah. Do you use it? I keep all my tools in the greenhouse. That wasn't what she asked. I've seen beetles with brightly colored shells, metallic shells even. They're relatively common, especially around here. There's a difference between that and actual gold. It can't be actual gold. Gold is just inside the earth or whatever. You can't make it. That's called alchemy. It was a whole thing. There's something about the report of Fitz going up Pointer Tower. Something suspicious. Let's ask him about it. So, Fitz, I have a report that you were seen sneaking up Pointer Tower, uh, holding a knife. That's not right. I don't go into Pointer Tower. I don't own a knife. And I don't sneak. Was it Fifi who told you this? How did you know that? A guess. She doesn't like me very much. But yeah, she was mistaken. Maybe she wasn't wearing her eye lens thing. What do you think, Grimoire? Fifi did see Fitz, but he was holding something else. So, if it wasn't a knife, what was it? What about this? Ah, that. Is it yours? It was a gift. It's sentimental. I have no reason to take it up Pointer Tower. I don't use it at all. An ornate trowel 
is used by Fitz to look after a potted flower in Penny's room. That flower? Yes? I've never seen it before. We need a clue to compare to that flower. Something that proves its connection to Fitz. Let's take a closer look at these. soil in Penny's room matches the pot and soil found in Fitz's greenhouse. Let me guess, Penny's flower was originally a gift from you, Fitz. There's no way it's a coincidence. Uh, no way what's a coincidence? The flower. It looks exactly like Penny. It took me a long time to breed. I wanted the colors to be exactly right. That's some gift. Turns out Penny isn't particularly interested in looking after plants. So I go into her room every now and again, but when she's not there, water the flower, change the soil, just trying to keep it alive. made that? Huh. Poppy's piano music. I remember when she started learning. She's improved a lot since then. Yeah, that's generally how it works. Right. Of course. Uh... Any idea who this is? Uh, no. No idea. Looks like someone doesn't want you to read that book. That's the main thing making me want to read it. A flower. Yeah, it's a flower. We found it in Penny's room. Okay. Mean anything to you? Why would it? Come on. I don't really go into Penny's room or anywhere in Pointer Tower. I just don't have a reason to. Those petals, they, uh... What? They're red. It's Fifi and Freya. Don't you think Poppy should be in the photo too? Maybe, maybe not. She doesn't really like crowds. Two people isn't a crowd. Right, but if she was in the photo, then it'd be three. Check mate. Freya's best work, in my opinion. Although, the photo doesn't carry the same energy as the real thing. What do you think it's a painting of? What do you mean? Like, what's the subject matter? What's that big red thing? Oh, I don't think it's that kind of painting. Penelope's three favorite birds. She's very protective over them. Are they, like, her pets? Do they have names? Oh, they have names. Penelope loves to name things. Do you remember what she named them? I do not. Penelope knows about birds. You should ask her instead. Actually, I wanted to ask you about something. There's a plant mentioned on this page, see? Do you have any? In the greenhouse? No. I don't grow that anymore. I've tried, in the past. It's incredibly difficult, even for me. I could never get it to live more than a couple of weeks. What's with the broken glass? This is a good example of how things work. I mix that soil here in the greenhouse. It's made with water from the lake. And it makes the fruit grow all shiny and gem stony? Sometimes. You never really know what's going to happen. And what do you do with this shiny and edible fruit? You look at it. 
You ever seen this before, Fitz? No, but I don't normally go into Fifi's room. That's not where we found it. Oh, I just thought it looks like it belongs to her. That looks like it might belong to Poppy. That belongs to Poppy. So, why is it up in Flora's tower? I'm not sure. It's an egg, with feet. It was locked, but we opened it, but it was empty. Fun story. Paints are different to flowers. I'd say so, yeah. At any time, flowers can bloom with perfect, faultless colors. Red, blue, white, with paint. Once you've tainted a color by mixing it with others, not even the most skilled painter can return it to its pure form. What do you think that is in Flora's hand? I don't know. It does look like a knife. But Flora wasn't holding anything at all when I saw her, after the murder. But there's something bothering me. Something else. What? When we went into Flora's room, she wasn't standing in this position. Well, she probably would have moved around a little bit by then. She wasn't standing at all. She was kneeling on the floor. There's something off about this. What is it? Why don't you take another look at Flora's room? You think we missed a clue up there? Not exactly. How odd. It's of no interest to me, but I overheard Poppy and Freya talking about it once. What were they saying? They were arguing about something, but I can't remember the details. That looks like it might belong to Poppy. Who gave you that information? Uh, well... We don't actually know who it was. We were contacted anonymously. I see. And what happens if the person who contacted you turns out to be the murderer? I never thought about that. Honestly, that would be kind of fun. Like a twist, you know? Nice painting. Gives you a pretty good idea of the layout. The lake looks like it forms a perfect circle around the island. It might seem strange to you, but nature is quite capable of producing perfectly geometric forms. And those mountain cliff things around the outside? We don't know much about them. They're unscalable. Not even Freya could have gone up there. What's that? This painting. It's speculative. There are no photographs from this angle as far as I know. So Freya just made it up? Let's call it an informed estimation. I like Flora. I hope she's all right. Do you think she had anything to do with the murder? There's no way. She wouldn't willingly cause any additional suffering for anyone. Felix is a contradiction. His loyalties are placed firmly within the realm of materialism, money, property. But his ego relies on an entirely fraudulent self-image, don't you think? Ah, uh, I was just about to say the same thing. Fifi doesn't like me. What did you do? I'm not sure. If you find out, maybe you can let me know. She questioned me. About what? My work, the plants, a bit of everything. Did she search the greenhouse? No, she didn't. You sure? Maybe she did it when you weren't in there. No, she hasn't touched it. How can you tell? Trust me. I can tell. She was always kind to me. She'd come into the greenhouse when I was working, sometimes by herself, sometimes with Poppy. I think they were just bored at first. Eventually, they started asking questions. About what? Poppy wanted to learn about flowers. Freya, she used to ask me about the insects. Insects? One of my jobs is to protect plants from things that might eat them. Freya brought me this little glass box, leaves and twigs inside. She'd say, put all the troublemakers in there. Every day I'd put a handful of beetles and other things in the box. Then she'd come along and take it away. 
I didn't really understand her, but she was always kind. Have you met this guy, Fitz? Shifty eyes, doesn't say a lot. Totally suspicious, if you ask me. That's... me. Yeah, that's... It, it was a joke. I was joking. Oh, I see. I imagine you don't visit the Astronomy Tower too often, do you? No, but I still see Pointer, sometimes. He's always curious about what I'm growing in the greenhouse. Asks me about the birds, too, and insects. He's pretty clued up on his evolutionary biology. I didn't think there was much overlap between astronomy and biology. Penelope is my fiancé. Don't take this the wrong way, but... Penny doesn't really strike me as your type. She's not who she pretends to be. People think she's... Well, they make assumptions. And how's the relationship doing recently? Good. It's good. Poppy and I are friends. Oh, I can buy that. Dark clothes, blue hair, an average of three words per sentence. Oh, you like two peas in a pod. She's very kind, and she has an interest in plants. Unusual flowers, mostly. I've been teaching her. Right. Is something wrong? When did Freya draw the picture of you, Hawkshaw? I didn't model for her, if that's what you're asking. She must have done it without my permission. Could just be from memory. It's not quite as detailed as the others, anyway. What is that? I'm not sure. It looks like it attaches to something else. Why don't you go back and double-check the area you found it? Maybe you'll find the rest of the something else. I'm not so sure about that. Hmm. Do you also have a pile of leaves as a clue? Oh, not yet. Did you see some suspicious leaves? One of three statues depicting the same creature. This one is wearing headphones. Perhaps they belong to someone who likes music. They're not headphones. They're earmuffs. For blocking out sound. Perhaps they belong to someone who doesn't like music. This is a potential murder weapon, is it not? I don't know. I don't think the murderer would leave the murder weapon just lying around. I think you'd be surprised as to what people leave lying around. Hmm. Where did you find this? Do you have any theories about where this might have been? Or who might have had it? I have several theories. But they are my theories, and I'm not going to share them. These figurines remind me of a case I once solved involving a possessed doll. Turned out to be a bit of a smokescreen, as these things often do. Your life sounds fun. Grimoire, why don't we ever have fun adventures like that? Are we not having a fun adventure right at this very moment? I'd tell him not to quit his day job. But he hasn't got one, has he? Is that a clue? Don't know. It was important enough to be framed, though. I framed my law degree, doesn't make it a clue. S same, yeah. Who's that? Not sure. It doesn't really look like anyone we've met so far. Strange. A diary. Have you read it? Not yet. It's locked. And you haven't attempted to force it open? That would be cheating. And you consider that important evidence, do you? These people really are ridiculous, aren't they? A photograph of Freya. 
could be important. I admit, it's powerful. Freya was a talented young woman. Someone even liked it enough to take a photo of it. Now, we don't know why they took the photograph, do we? Perhaps they just wanted it for reference. This belongs to you, Hawkshaw? Correct. And, uh, what is it? It's my handheld microscope for up-close investigation work. What do you magnify with it? Trace particles, dust, oils, clothing fibers. Have you used it here at Tangle Tower? I have. I used it to examine the greenhouse only two days ago. What were you looking for? That is between myself and my client. There's something about Hawkshaw's handheld microscope. Something suspicious. Let's ask her about it. This little microscope thing? You said you used it to search the greenhouse. And this would make perfect sense. If you knew what my client had asked me to find. Of course, I still have no intention of disclosing that information. You're such a tease, Hawkshaw. Don't worry, we already worked out what you're searching for. You're not as hopeless as you look. Thanks. So, that's what you were looking for in the greenhouse? This beetle? Surely even you can understand the logic of it. The greenhouse is home to a great many insects. The gardener could have easily kept the beetles hidden in there. Well, Fitz said you questioned him, but didn't actually search the greenhouse. Hmm. He is not exactly the type to appreciate subtlety. He simply didn't notice that I was using my microscope. What do you reckon, Grimoire? I know for a fact you didn't use the microscope in the greenhouse. It's not a microscope at all. All of a sudden, Detective Grimoire is some kind of expert on microscopes. According to Fifi, uses a telescopic lens, so Hawkshaw lied about it. I'm inclined to believe Fifi when it comes to stuff like this. Hawkshaw, why did you lie about owning a telescope? When you were a child, what did you aspire to become? Uh, a detective, naturally. Emperor of the galaxy. I wanted to be an astronomer. Really? I harbored a desire to understand the secrets of the wider universe. A fool's errand, to be sure, but a seductive one. At fifteen, I decided instead to apply my intelligence to the world around me. And so, I became a detective. But the yearning for elusive knowledge is a powerful force. I tried to keep it with me. Sorry, but we're way off track. What's the deal with the little telescope? A memento. My childhood. Little more than a toy. Why did you bring it with you? When I discovered that it was Professor Pointer who had hired me, I dared to consider it something of a planetary alignment. I had hoped he might sign my telescope. An extremely childish indulgence, I admit. I never would have guessed. Hold on. You're admitting you didn't use it in the greenhouse then? Correct. As it happens, I have no need to search the greenhouse to such a degree. Professor Pointer doesn't consider the gardener a suspect in our theft investigation. So, who is your suspect? Things have become complicated. My lead suspect is your murder victim.
Three birds, one cage. What makes them worth keeping cooped up, I wonder? Would they not be happier flying free? But then they might fly away from Tangle Tower entirely. I wonder if they would. A book from the library. One of hundreds, no doubt. What makes this one special? It's about birds. Yes. I see that. Some breed of amphibious humanoid. Potentially bipedal. Although none of the statues show the creature's feet. I guess we'll never know. The people here are surprisingly materialistic, considering how sheltered they are. Materialistic? Growing this fruit simply because it produces a gemstone-like material. For what possible purpose, other than financial gain? You're speculating. What would you do, Grimoire, if you could grow valuable stone straight from the earth? I believe that was in Flora's room yesterday. But it was not cracked when I saw it last. A somewhat cumbersome device, and an altogether inefficient way to listen to music. What kind of music do you like, Hawkshaw? I, I like anything. What a cop-out. You got it open. I'm impressed. I managed it myself yesterday. I thought Flora might be hiding the... hiding something in there. It was empty yesterday, too? It was. Perhaps it's always been empty. Paints? Yep. Paints. Mm-hmm. Makes quite an impression, doesn't it? Although I can't imagine why she painted Flora wielding a knife. You didn't see a knife anywhere in Flora's room, did you? I did not. I conclude whatever stabbed Freya must have been brought into the room from outside. Unless, of course, it was the painting itself. Surely you don't believe in that kind of thing. A detective's job is to examine every avenue of thinking. The paint is still wet. Yeah, well, we know Freya was in the middle of painting when she was killed. Do you know that? How? Because you were told? Conveniently left anonymous. It's useless until you can prove to whom it concerns. Can you do that? No. No. Have you deciphered the meaning of those four symbols on the harp? We're working on it. That's a no, then. Where'd you dig that up? It wasn't buried. It was underwater. Someone trying to conceal evidence, perhaps? <laughs> you truly consider this a case file? What's wrong with it? No organization, no system. That's my style. I like seeing everything laid out at once. Yeah, it helps me think. How quaint. Tangled Tower. No idea why they insist on calling it that. It's not even a tower. It's little more than a pair of turrets stuck on either side of a mansion. Have you... searched the whole place? I believe so. Why? He wants to know if you found any secret rooms. Huh. I'm afraid the residents of Tangle Tower are far too ordinary for anything like that. I was disappointed, too. Quite the stoic statue, isn't she? I can only dream of being as cold and indifferent as Flora Fellow. You think she's hiding something? Perhaps. She has some strange habits. I heard she barely sleeps, an hour here or there, sporadically. Spends the rest of her time staring up at the sky. Did you get anything useful out of him? Not sure. What about you? Nothing worth committing to paper. I think he knows more than he lets on. Probably. But talking with him is so tedious. Considerably intelligent, and her powers of observation are enviable. But she has no ambition. No focus. In her defense, she's still a teenager. Barely. 314 cases solved. 300? 
114. Freya Fellow is of great interest to me. I perceived her to be the most intelligent individual here at Tangle Tower. Within a day, she had identified for whom I was working and for what I was searching. I didn't know how she did it. I was impressed. I regret that I did not question her more thoroughly when I had the opportunity. You couldn't have known she was about to be killed, though. I have only myself to blame for failing to perceive the signs. What signs? I do not wish to do your job for you, detective. I'll say this. He's well suited to physical labor. That's a nice way to put it. Fitz spends most of his time alone in the greenhouse. But I heard he's been breeding experimental flowers. In secret. Whoa. Scandal. I just wonder if he's getting... restless. Professor Pointer is a respectable astronomer. Keeps himself to himself. What? We're just surprised. That was the most polite you've been about anyone. I find her rather embarrassing. Little more than a spoiled child. Penny must be at least 25. 27. Just makes it worse. Poppy has remarkable musical talent. She could be famous, wealthy even, if she wanted to. I should probably have to leave Tangle Tower first. Quite. Bad likeness. It looks like you're standing in a rose bush. Is there something wrong with that? Where did you find this? It was in the attic. Oh, huh. I forgot we even had an attic. I see a lot of birds up in the rooftop garden. They seem to really like it up there. Why's that? It's quiet. Do you know where those earmuffs came from? I put them there. Why? I found them lying around. I think they belong to Fitz. I put them on the statue so he'd see them. I thought they looked like headphones. Like he's in the recording studio with his guitar. No? If they do belong to Fitz, he hasn't taken them back yet. When did you find them? This morning. Where? I don't know, in a hallway. I can't remember exactly. Is that a gardening troll? Yeah. I think it belongs to Fitz. Really? Huh. Never seen him use it. You get some weird insects around here, but I've never seen one like that. I'm not sure anyone has. Freya might have. She used to keep beetles in a box in her room. Uh, why? For fun, obviously. Is that supposed to be Flora? Possibly. Oh, how nice. Whose paints are those? They belong to Felix, I think. Yeah, it's mine. What's so special about it? I got it from my teacher. It's the first piece I ever learned. How long have you been playing? Since the day I turned six. Family tradition. I was really excited to start learning. As soon as I got out of my first lesson, I told Freya and Fifi all about it. When I arrived at my second lesson the next day, Freya was there too. She hadn't asked permission, just showed up. For two whole years, the teacher taught us both. Was Freya any good? She would have been even better than me, if she'd stuck with it. But one day, she just stopped coming to lessons. Why? That's just it. There was no reason. That's when I realized things were different for her.
Can you play the tune for us? Sure. It's literally eight notes. I have it memorized. I don't know what that is. Weird, considering we found it hidden in your room. Well, my room is full of junk. There's probably a bunch of stuff hidden in there. I don't mean like... Please stop talking to me. Is that Fifi's diary? I'm sure I've seen it in her room before. That's where we found it. Have you ever read it? Do you know what's written in there? Nope. I'm sure she wouldn't appreciate me invading her privacy. I thought you and Fifi were close friends. Yeah, we are. It's just, Fifi's gotten kind of impatient with me recently. Do you know why? I'm not sure. I'm sure she'd tell you if you asked. Oh, she would. She'd give it to me straight. Probably why I've been avoiding it. Never seen that one before. Was it in the greenhouse? No, we found it in Penny's room. Ah, uh, right. Those petals. What about them? Uh, it's nothing. They're just unusual. This is a photo of Fifi and Freya, right? Yeah. How come you're not in it? You're friends with them too, aren't you? I'm not really one for photographs. Fifi looks like she really admires Freya. Fifi's loyalty to Freya is unshakable. I think everybody sees something different. Did Freya ever tell you what she saw in it? Not exactly. She said something about it being from a recurring nightmare. Sorry, but if it was from a nightmare, why would you paint it and leave it in front of your bed? Maybe she wanted to take control of it. Giving something a physical form can make it easier to deal with. Well, sometimes. There's something about that diary we found in Fifi's room. Something suspicious. Let's ask her about it. I think it's kind of cruel to keep three birds in one cage like that. Does Penny not let them out to fly? Oh, she does. She must do. But I don't think they're allowed to go far. Penny can be a little... protective. That belongs to Flora, I think. Don't look at me. I didn't break it. Does anybody else use the music room? Yes. I don't know who, but I can tell when somebody else has touched the piano. Oh, you've been to the greenhouse? What did you think? Uh, impressive, I guess. But kind of unsettling, with Fitz lurking in the shadows the whole time. Yeah, he does that. Did you find that in Fifi's room? No. Should we have? No, it's just... It looks like something she'd use, don't you think? Does this belong to you, Poppy? Now that's not really my style, is it? But who else would own a tape like this? Literally anybody. It was my mother's originally. So, why is it up in Flora's room? She just gets the most use out of it. Freya would borrow it too sometimes. What was inside? Nothing. Huh. Why is the glass cracked down one side? Natural wear and tear, maybe? No way. Freya took good care of her stuff. When I first saw it, I thought it looked like Flora was holding a knife with blood on the tip. You don't think that anymore? No. It was a stupid thing to say. The room was dark. I was in shock. I'm just an idiot. But it was blood on the tip. If you hadn't said anything, maybe Fifi wouldn't have checked. Exactly. It's stupid. But we would have missed out on an important clue. Is it a clue? 
Really? Tell me how it's a clue. Tell me how it helps. Nothing about the knife makes any sense. It's just freaking everyone out. Wish I'd never said anything. Freya would always load up the palette with all the exact colors she was gonna need. I think it helped her zone out and focus on the actual painting itself. Like getting all your sheet music lined up before playing a long piece. Right. So the blob of black paint in the middle, that was for painting Flora? Flora's dress, yeah. She looks even more black than I do. Don't you think that's weird? That the letter isn't addressed to anyone? Or signed by anyone? Someone's being deliberately secretive. Or they're trying to manipulate you. What do you make of the statue? I know that's the only harp in the whole of Tangle Tower. <sighs> I've never actually seen a real one. Maybe it's from before your time. Oh, definitely. You see how old this statue is? What about the symbols? One of them looks like piano keys. Yeah. Weird. This is mine. Really? No, well, yes, it was. I gave it to Freya about a year ago. What was on it? Nothing. It was blank. Freya said she wanted to record something. Any idea how it ended up underwater? Maybe someone wanted to destroy it, but got really lazy. There's something I noticed about Freya's knife wound. Hit me. From what we could tell, the blade went in at an exact right angle, perpendicular to Freya's body. And there's only one small pool of blood, nothing on Freya's hands or anywhere else. The whole thing is just a little too peaceful. So there are two families living in Tango Tower? Mm-hmm. Three pointers and five fellows. Four fellows. What's the connection between them? There isn't one. Not really. It was all built by the Remington family. Flora is a Remington, originally. So was Primrose, my mother. She married into the Pointers, and Flora married into the Fellows. So the Fellows and the Pointers own the house now? Flora owns the house. Depending on who you ask, that means her husband Felix owns it too. What about your father? His claim over the house kind of fell apart after my mother left. Where's your mother now? No idea. Needless noise from tongues expel, unless within the mouth they dwell. The spoken word, unfit for dealing, with the shifting form of feeling, stand unblinking in the face of taciturn and soundless space. Forgone drifter, holding fast, days as shadow seeker past. Is it bravery or surrender? Accepting that your world will render nothing darker than the gloom some four walls make around a room. Between the lips a silver spoon, a story written all too soon. The chosen dwelling of her heart, unjustly chosen to depart. Lost her liberation lays in the center of a maze. With surging tide, the waves are thrown, an entity of all its own. But on its surface you may see, reflected in the waters be, the orchestrator, pale and still, pulling strings, enacting will. Heart of head, but free of mind, unimprisoned, unconfined. With starry eyes, she sees beyond, Behind our walls, beneath our pond. A soul untied, it's hers, it's free. Was then, is now, will ever be. Softly does the flower grow, all in time, and time is slow. Rest a seed within the earth, but do not rush its gentle birth. Hour by hour, day by day, Tune your heart to nature's way.
Eavesdrop what the stars are saying, earthly tether, slowly fraying, floating helpless from the worst, of jealous hunger, selfish thirst. Take a moment, kneel and meet, the flowers growing at your feet. Feathers flashing in the light, from a sunbeam gleaming bright. I shield my eyes and turn my head, but all at once I've been misled. Light is shining on the stage, but through the railings of a cage. That's me. I'm on a list of murder suspects. Always thought that would be kind of cool, but it's just tedious. Falls a little short, doesn't it? Your diary, Fifi? We found it in your bedroom. Of course it is mine. Ridiculous question. Why is it locked up like that? Would you seriously require an explanation? Very well. A fairly common concept, the so-called secret diary, is favored in particular by girls between the ages of ten so and- So, there are secrets written in here? This particular diary is unused. It doesn't look unused. It's somebody else's diary. How could you arrive at that conclusion? It is kept in my bedroom. It is mine. We need a clue to compare with the diary. Something to prove who the original owner was. Let's take a closer look at this. It's the same thing as the secret diary, which proves it belonged to Freya. You were hiding Freya's diary in your room, and you kept it locked, too. Why would I do either of these things? Fifi didn't want anyone to see personal secrets within Freya's diary. Is this true, Fifi? I know Freya was your friend, but if you're trying to hide something... You did not know Freya, so this might be difficult to understand. She did her own thing, in her own way. By concealing Freya's written accounts, it is simply my intention to preserve her innocence. Innocence? Might be easier if you just let us read the diary, Fifi. Very well. I will open it. However, as you read it, please remember, Freya was the most kind and the most wise person I have ever known. Alright, Fifi unlocked the diary. Finally. What's in there? definitely up to something. 
Something to do with the statue in the garden, I think. Maybe we should go back and check. And we could have missed something. Freya was quite the talent. She had a way of capturing the spirits of her subjects. Not in an evil way, in a good way. What is it? We don't know. We were really hoping you would. My friends, shed your hope and let it fall free like sandbags from a hot air balloon. That's the most depressing idiom I've ever heard. Is that a clue? Really? It might be. The statue was up in the rooftop garden. Yes, it's been there a while. You can see the brass is slightly tarnished by the elements. But it's not too bad. Uh, might be salvageable. I've never seen that before. Looks valuable. What's this all about? Uh, some kind of rare jewel? I'm pretty sure the research is about a real insect. If it's made of gold, then it's made of gold. <laughs> ah, you found it. What, uh, what do you think, huh? I had to rush the final touches a little bit. It turned out all right, though. <laughs> What's it supposed to be? It's Flora, of course. Surrounded by all her favorite people. There's something about the image of Flora in the painting. Something suspicious. Let's ask her about it. So, this painting. Specifically, that knife in Flora's hand. Yeah, it's creepy. But we didn't find a knife anywhere in the room. So, what's going on? It's not a knife. We need a clue to compare with the painting. Something to explain what that knife shape actually is. Let's take a closer look at this. Just a feather from an ink dip bird. It's definitely the right shape, but the book's not in color. The thing Flora's holding in the painting is red and white, specifically. Is there anything to suggest that the ink dip bird is red and white too? This little thing? I don't understand why Felix would make a model of this bird as part of a gift for Flora. And come to think of it, why would Flora be holding a feather in the painting anyway? was Penny's pet, so she almost, maybe just... The ink dip bird was Flora's pet, so she kept a single feather to remember it by. She kept the bird as a pet. 
and it died? Maybe. Maybe it flew away. Flora spends all her time staring out the window. Either way, she kept the feather. I think it was pretty important to her. All right. So, she was holding the feather while Freya was painting her. But where is it now? You'd think she'd keep it somewhere close by. Yeah, I think she does. Normally. This is where Flora usually keeps her feather. That we opened it. It's empty. Mm-hmm. Completely empty. Flora? She's pointing at something in the corner of the room. It's just a pile of books. They're not... Wait, there's something tucked inside this one. I've been carving for a couple of years now. <laughs> I was hopeless when I started, but it didn't take me long to master it, as, as you can see. Do you paint them yourself, too? I do indeed. <laughs> uh, Freya kindly taught me the basics. Nowadays, I can make just about anything I can imagine. Of course, this particular model is a self-portrait based on hard fact. Hard fact, huh? So, you own a sword, Felix? Uh, of course. I own a great many. Uh, but my weapons are stored well away from Tangle Tower. Uh, uh, safety first and uh, all, all that. Uh, I've never been one for music. Uh, why not ask Poppy instead? Oh dear. Do you know who this is? Not a clue. Why would someone lock up a book like that? We think it's a secret diary. Aha! <laughs> Teenagers are funny, aren't they? And that looks like it might belong to Fitz. Goodness me! My daughter Fiona and her best friend. They grow up so fast. Do you know why it's ripped like that? Ah, yes. I didn't even notice. No idea. That's one of Freya's paintings, is it not? It's impressive, uh, but a little miserable for my tastes. Bizarre things, aren't they? Penelope seems rather attached to them. Do you not feel sorry for them in that little cage? Uh, come now, I I'm sure they could leave if they really wanted to. Where did you find that? It was in the library. Really? How odd. Now this is still in very good condition. <laughs> Apart from the crack, of course. What about those shards on the inside of the horn? Looks like somebody broke a glass and was trying to conceal the evidence. Cunning. That looks like it might belong to Fitz. Why don't you ask Fiona about that one? Looks like her area of expertise. That looks like it might belong to Poppy. Flora's quite fond of that old thing. <laughs> it's in poor shape, though. Do you know what happened to it? Can't say I do. Does Flora normally keep something in here? She must do, but I admit, I've never managed to work out what. Why not just ask her? I feel like if somebody keeps something locked away in a ceramic egg, it's because they don't want to be asked about it. <laughs> Rules to live by.
These drawings are quite precious. I'm surprised Flora let you see them. What happened to the bird? Did it die? I don't know. Seems likely though, doesn't it? Looks like Freya's paints. Do you know why the parts are cracked down one side? No, that's very odd. They're normally in excellent condition. You seem pretty sure about that. It would have been a beautiful painting, as uh, rather a shame Freya was unable to finish it. Nothing about it seems strange to you. Well, all these uh, modern paintings are slightly strange, aren't they? The emotion of the piece taking over from, say, uh, anatomical accuracy. <laughs> what about the knife in Flora's hand? A knife? That's what you see? You don't? Well, as I was saying, Freya's artistic approach distorts certain shapes. Hard to say exactly what we're looking at. Hmm. It's unlike her to leave paint on the brush. I think we'll give her a pass, given the circumstances. Ah, yes. So we shall. I'm as confused as you are. Rather ugly, isn't it, as far as statues go? Years of wind and rain have not been kind to it either. Do you know what it is? Uh, the creature, I mean. It's connected to the Remington family history in some way, but uh, I, I can't recall. But that looks like it might belong to Poppy. What's this? It's my case file. It's how I know what I'm supposed to be doing. You mean to say you're bound by the limits of what's written in this little document? Uh, sounds dreadful. I found it comforting. Charming, isn't it? Yes. Uh, built by the Remington family originally. Dear Flora's father and his... Uh, <clears throat> associates. But now it's owned by you? By the Fellow family? The Fellows and the Pointers have both come to claim a certain degree of ownership. And who named it Tangle Tower? Uh, Flora chose the name. <laughs> what does it mean? I think it was her intention that it uh, mean nothing at all. Um, something of a fresh start. From what? This really isn't for me to say, but she had some kind of disagreement with her siblings. <laughs> After they moved away, Flora changed the name of the house. I think perhaps she hoped it would make them feel unwelcome, and is less likely to come back. That's kind of extreme. <laughs> yes, it is rather, isn't it? <laughs> Dearest Flora, a remarkable woman. Oh, yes, been married over 20 years now. You two still get on? <clears throat> of course. What a question. She hasn't gone quiet on you. It's true, she has an independent streak. She's uh, had it her whole life. She's the youngest of three. Always something of a lone wolf, you know? Just the way she is. Lone wolf is putting it lightly. She doesn't seem to want to talk to anyone. She just likes time to herself. Uh, Away from the company of other humans. Other humans? Other... well, yes. Uh, other people, you know. You're the one currently basking in his presence. <laughs> you tell me. Let's move on. My daughter Fiona. Our little burgeoning genius. <laughs> You've met her? We did. She's going by Fifi these days. So I've heard. I asked her some weeks ago, what's wrong with your real name? She told me, <laughs> get this, she wanted a name with an even number of syllables. <laughs> she makes up the strangest things when she's under pressure. What makes you think she made that up? I happen to know the real reason she prefers Fifi over Fiona. Oh, yeah? It's what Freya called her. 
Quite the character, eh? A fellow member of the Order of the Crimson Cloak. Is that a real thing? Uh, no, I just meant to, because we both wear, you know, red capes uh, of, of a sort. Has she questioned you yet? If you call that questioning, <laughs> she seemed bored by everything I had to say. I heard on the grapevine. Supposedly, Hawkshaw is searching for some rare item. Something called the Golden Beetle. Honestly, it's probably a bunch of sensationalist rubbish. You reckon? Quite sure. There is no treasure called the Golden Beetle. How do you know? Because I would have heard of it. Uncommonly skilled as an artist, but Freya was so much more than her talent. She helped me get started with my own painting, you know. It taught me what she knew about wood carving, too. Tremendous patience. She was ever so good with dear Flora. Freya and Flora were close? Oh, yes. Especially after, uh, especially recently. How are you related to Freya? Somewhat distantly, as it happens, uh, my father, Lord Fellow, was her grandfather. Uh, technically, that makes her a fellow. Let's just say, uh, there was some discussion over whether she ought to carry the name at all. Uh, there's a family tree in the Grand Hall. Uh, you should take a look at it. What about her inheritance? Freya's parents died when she was around three years old. She came to live here shortly afterwards. Nobody left her a thing? I'm afraid not. She had no formal claim over anything at Tangle Tower. Fitz? I don't trust him. He's slippery. Never commits to anything. Brain like an onion. An onion? Did you two have an argument? No, oh, no. But my daughter doesn't like him at all. And I trust Fiona's judgment entirely. She's a very vigilant young woman. Percival Pointer. Good old... Pa so, uh, what do you reckon? Uh, is he the murderer? I don't know, maybe. We still need... That is not information we're willing to share at this time. I'm just saying, keep an eye on him. Holds on to a lot of bitterness, does old Pointer. Just because he's always struggled to support his family. Slightly pathetic, really. And how long have you known him? Over 35 years. Childhood friends? Rivals? Don't know if I'd do him the honor of considering him my rival. Penelope seems to have really settled into a groove. She struggled a bit when she was younger. Always a little estranged. How come? Well, she was mostly raised by her uncle, and he really only makes time for his own daughter. Now, of course, she's bringing the two families together through her marriage. It's a nice gesture, <laughs> heartfelt, but futile. Poppy's a good friend to my daughter. No, always has been. I think they get on well because they're so... different. Different? Like how? Uh, Poppy is, uh, she's quite introspective. <laughs> Good with feelings. Fiona, uh, not so much. Still, Poppy always seems to be sulking about something. The heavy, heavy price of emotional intelligence. There's something about Felix's painting supplies. Something suspicious. Let's ask him about it. So, about this paint we found in your room. Nothing suspicious about it. I used it to, to paint, obviously. Totally normal thing to do. We never said it was suspicious. Come on then, out with it. What exactly are you accusing me of? It's not your paint bot. Did you take it from somewhere else? What on earth? It's definitely mine. I even have proof. Look, the lid matches the ones on all my other paint pots. End 
of discussion. That's not the end of the discussion. We need a clue to compare with Felix's red paint. Something to prove who it actually belongs to. Let's take a closer look at this. Freya's red paint pot was stolen and replaced with Felix's red paint pot, but the lids were swapped to hide it. That red paint is from Freya's supplies, not yours. Swapping the lids doesn't hide what you did. Why are you bothering me about paint anyway? And none of this is connected to your murder. This red paint pot was somehow filled with blood before Freya used it to paint Flora. Oh, that, uh, that's definitely something. Right, fine. Here's the story. I was busy working on uh, a project when I suddenly realized I had run out of red paint. There was a certain amount of uh, time pressure. So I politely asked Freya if I could borrow hers. Just for a little while, you know, perfectly reasonable request. Uh, but she said no. I tried to explain why I needed it, but she didn't seem to care. So, uh, well, I took Freya's red paint pot and swapped it with my own empty one. You went into her room? Not my proudest moment. Uh, but it's just paint. I didn't touch anything else. And the paint pot you left behind was definitely empty? Uh, quite. I have absolutely no idea how it got blood in it, if that's what you're asking. Why were you in such a hurry to get a hold of red paint anyway? I was trying to finish this in time for Flora's birthday. I needed red to paint the final details. Could you not have just used a different color? Out of the question. It had to be red and white. If you managed to finish it, why haven't you given it to Flora yet? Nah, uh, well, I decided against it in the end. After what happened, it seemed a bit uh, insensitive. Let's go over what we know about the crime scene. wasn't here before. What is it? It's a little wooden toy. It looks kind of like a crab. There's a note stuck to the back. What does it say? Grimoire? Is it really from her? How can it be? Why don't we check the handwriting with Freya's diary? Good idea. Hold on. Well? It's a perfect match. Well, it's confirmed. We have a ghost helping us. Let's keep this to ourselves for now. What about the little wooden toy thingy? Maybe we can put it to some kind of use.
we know a little more about the crime scene now. So, what do you think? Was Freya stabbed by her own painting? from the paint pot was used to paint the red tip of the painted ink dip feather to resemble a bloody knife. I think you're right. Can't decide if I'm disappointed or relieved. I have a question. Why? Either it's a very strange coincidence, or somebody set it up. Somebody deliberately put blood in the paint pot and hid that feather after the crime. Why? To distract us? Possibly. Well, it worked. Possibly. Flora's the only person who could have hidden the feather. Unless someone took it from her. Let's go over what we do know. The door was locked the whole time. It stayed locked until Fitz kicked it down. Normally, it can only be opened from the inside. Pointer said he couldn't see Freya from his telescope. But he did see Flora lying by the window. So whatever got Freya got Flora too? Except Flora survived. She didn't get a stab wound like Freya did. Hold on. If there was no knife, then what did stab Freya? Uh, it could be anything. It might not even be important. How is it not important? Right now, I'm less interested in the what, and more interested in the how. The angle of Freya's wound suggests she was stabbed at a perfect right angle. That is, from directly in front of her. But she was standing right up by the canvas. Somehow, Freya ended up lying on her back, still perfectly in line with a painting. Maybe something went through it. Through the painting? Wouldn't that leave a hole? Okay, well, how about this? How do we know Freya was stabbed before she fell over? Maybe her being stabbed and her falling over are completely unrelated. It's mine. Can you play the tune for us? Sure. It's literally eight notes. I have it memorized.
That's all four melodies, I think. So, what do we do with them? Should we go back to the gardens again? Let's try this again. You know, I think we might be able to solve this now. That's gotta be right. Nothing. Maybe it's broken. Wait, do you hear that? Where do you think it goes? Down. Looks like they're being boiled, but the liquid is ice cold. A cracked glass tank with nine little rooms. Each one has one or two insects inside. I can't tell if they're still alive. I like that you called them rooms. It's so dark. I can barely tell what I'm looking at. Forensic Entomology, Volume 3. That's an incredibly specific area of study. What's in there? Nine beetles. All different, all dead. Poor little guys. There's a bunch of notes written all around them. It's mostly numbers. No idea what they mean. It's a little diagram of a beetle with some incomprehensible notes scribbled next to it. That's weird. What? It looks really... normal. Compared to the beetles behind the glass. Chemistry apparatus. Bugs. Big ones. Looks like they're made of metal. A candle, perched on a barrel. Very medieval. I was thinking pirates. Medieval pirates. Is that a lab coat? Warning, hand wash only. Size, small. This place would never pass a fire safety inspection. It's a hatch. But we're already in the basement. Depends on your perspective. Let's not go down just yet. We still haven't explored this room properly. Rows of plants, growing in wide wooden boxes. What color is the soil? It looks black, but it's too dark to tell. A glass tank? It's full of plants. There's a layer of condensation on the inside. Is it locked? Seems likely, doesn't it? Weird looking safe. I'm pretty sure the latches can slide into the middle.
got it. I'm impressed. Anything inside? Yeah, more research. Whose research is this? This is some seriously in-depth research. That's impressive, but it's incomplete. There's a section missing. So, this is Pointer's secret lab? Definitely seems like he's the one using it. I guess not a lot of people know about the secret entrance. Right. But if Pointer's the only one who comes down here, why would he need to lock his research in a safe? Who is he hiding it from? He's just paranoid. Especially about his golden beetle. What do you think he's trying to do, exactly? has been trying to breed the golden beetle in the underground laboratory. Why? Because it's rare? Because it's gold. Is that it? I think so. I don't think he cares about entomology any more than he cares about astronomy. He just wants to get one over on Felix. If he can breed his own gold, suddenly Poppy's inheritance is looking pretty... Uh... Infinite. Might explain why he was so worried about losing the beetle. Maybe somebody did steal it. Might have been Freya after all. We know she was trying to get through the secret door in the garden. She might not have known what was down here, though. Maybe she was just curious. Curious, sure. But not naive. I reckon she knew what was going on. I think we're still missing the bigger picture. There's no way this is all just about a beetle. We're done. Ready to go down? Again? It's an old coat rack. Looks thoroughly neglected. Two cloaks, and a green hat draped on top for good measure. Old cardboard boxes. How exciting. Oh, but there's more. They're also damp and empty. Do these puddles worry you? Why? That's lake water, but it's indoors. I see your point. Basements don't normally have windows. We're at the bottom of the lake. We must be. Right. But if that's the lake bed, why does it look like that? Like what? White, smooth, no plants, no anything. That's not what a lake looks like. Where are we? Did you notice how much light this room has? For a room with one candle? It's all coming through the window. I'm pretty sure lakes are supposed to be darker at the bottom, not lighter. Why is there a room down here anyway? And why is it so much older than the rest of Tangle Tower? We still don't really know why people came to live here in the first place. Maybe they just wanted to get rich, like Pointer with his beetles. I feel like the Remingtons came here for the lake. For what was in it. It's empty, though. 
More empty than a normal lake would be. It is now, yeah. Maybe we're too late. A single book on a little makeshift table. This is creeping me out slightly. Why? I think it's a children's book. It's an empty bookcase. Something tells me it's been empty for a long time. There's a roll of paper up there. I'll see if I can reach it. Let me guess. Blank. Study. Wait. I know what you're thinking. And no, we never went in there. How did we miss it? That's the room we're in now. It must be. It's not labeled as anything on these plans, though. I think it already existed when this was made. Storage. It's Freya's room. This seems pretty significant. Agreed. Too late. This photograph has been stabbed. Why? By what? Not sure. Some kind of metal stabbing thingy. So what's the photo? In the photo? This man in the photo, he reminds me of something from one of our clues. Felix made a little model of him for Flora? Yeah, it makes sense when you know who he is. Lord Remington. Remington. That makes him Flora's father. Meaning the girl in the photo is... Yeah, it's her. See the bird, too. I never would have guessed. Times sure do change. I don't know. I don't think she looks so different. Let's head back up to the Grand Hall. I want to find that last room. dark all of a sudden. How long were we down there? This must be it. This thing goes all the way up. How are we supposed to get up there? Hang on. It's pitch black, but I think there's a switch. A ladder. Want to go up? Is 
that a crab? It's got a translucent exoskeleton. You can actually see its insides. Also, crabs normally have two claws, right? Not three? It's got also, a crabs. Gah. You sure we should be touching it? Grimoire, don't you think it looks familiar? Perfect. this something somebody didn't want us to find what is it was someone trying to hide it from us I don't know but it looks incomplete to me I want to know what happened to the rest of it. Where are the other parts? We found them already. What do you make of it? Not sure. Let's keep an open mind. You don't think the crossbow is the murder weapon? Oh no, the crossbow is definitely the murder weapon. But that doesn't mean we've solved the mystery. Some kind of fish and a bird skull, I guess? If that's a bird skull, we're talking about a 15-foot bird here. Well, how about we stop talking about it? You know, in any normal room, this thing would be my main concern. In here, though, it barely makes the top three. Who are all the people in this photo? Not sure, but it looks like someone didn't like them very much. Their eyes have all been crossed out. Important. I'm sure of it. Another photograph. Their faces are all crossed out with some kind of black ink. That's weird. Oh, you think so? Uh, no, I mean, something I just realized. Sally, did we meet any of these people here at Tango Tower? Well, the woman on the left looks a little like Poppy, but her style is way different. And at first, I thought the guy on the top right was Felix, but now that I look at it, I don't think it is him. Those aren't bird cages. Some of them are disconcertingly large. At least they're all empty. You sure that's a good thing? Do those look like scratch marks to you? On the glass? Yeah, they're on the inside. It's a wooden pin board, hung up on one of the chains. Looks like there's a couple of things missing from it.
dragon. Snake? Worm? That's the one. Crumpled up paper. Is there anything written on any of it? Not really. It's mostly blank. Nice chair. It's still warm. Maybe it's just heat from the incinerator. Maybe. Coffee table, half-empty wine bottle, lamp left on. I'm gonna say someone's been using this room. Someone can place it enough to leave their notebook lying around. and some kind of hunting rifle, mounted on the wall. Honestly, doesn't look like they've been moved in a few years. I'm more worried about the third one. The third one? The one that isn't there. An incinerator built into the wall. It's still pretty hot. Is there anything left inside? It's mostly ashes. But yeah, there's something. Someone's been using this room. I don't get it. This room is in the original building plans for the mansion. But nowadays, it's some big secret? It's not a secret to everybody. At least one other person still knows about this room. The way the notebook was left out on the table makes me think it's someone who has the room all to themselves. Whoever it was, they left more than just the notebook. There's a whole design project on this pinboard. Feels like someone put quite a bit of effort into it. It's a shame there are things missing from it. I'm betting it'd make more sense if we could see it all together. That might not be impossible, you know. from Freya's room, and those sketches... Did Freya design Detective Hawkshaw's clothes? What kind of sense does that make? I don't think that's why Freya made that painting, but it may have been why somebody took a photo of it, to use as reference. And as for those sketches of Hawkshaw, I don't think Freya actually drew them. It was somebody else, someone with less of a talent for art. Doesn't exactly narrow it down. Should we go ask Detective Hawkshaw about all this? I'm not sure. I still don't know what's really going on. Time to solve this. Break out the notebook. Time to put it all together. Let's start with this. It's an arrow for the crossbow, and it matches Freya's wound. It's the murder weapon. I'm sure of it. Despite the fact it doesn't have any blood on it, and it wasn't found anywhere near the crime scene? Mm-hmm. It was cleaned, then it was hidden. I don't think anybody expected us to get down to that room at the bottom of the lake. Okay, so Freya was shot by a crossbow. Where was it fired from? It 
give us fired from above, Freya. Above, huh? Yeah. Our diagram doesn't show everything. Let's add in the rest of the crime scene. The attic. Perfect hiding place. We even found a part of the murder weapon up there. The reel was used to pull the arrow back up through the crack in the floorboards. Explains why we never found a weapon at the crime scene, I guess. The murderer must have dropped the reel in the attic. I'm guessing they were in a hurry to escape. Wait. The arrow was fired through the crack in the floorboards? Yeah. It's directly above where Freya was found lying on her back. Nope. Doesn't add up. It would have missed her if she was still standing up by the painting. Ah. Right. Unless... Freya was already lying on her back before the arrow was fired. I think so too. She'd fallen unconscious. Something in the room caused Freya to fall unconscious. The gramophone. Right. But the gramophone by itself can't do that. There is something in the gramophone. Mm-hmm. Something small. Pointer's research says it can emit an incredibly loud hiss when it feels threatened. Poppy and Fitz both said they heard a loud noise around the time of the murder. Neither of them had any idea what it was. This seems a little far-fetched. Is it really loud enough to knock someone out? No. I don't think so. Not by itself. But don't forget, it was being amplified by the shape of the gramophone. Now, I don't think we're purely talking about volume either. It might just be a particular type of frequency. This is getting kind of scientific. Since when do you know anything about the effects of weaponized audio frequency? I don't. But I think someone else does. Do you remember that statue we found in the music room? The horn it's playing. It's a pretty similar shape to the one on the gramophone. That broken glass isn't there on accident. This is someone's science experiment. Thinking about it, Pointer said he saw Flora was knocked out too. I guess they were both in range of the noise. Although, Pointer might have been lying. Personally, I think he was telling the truth about that. It's pretty clear a powerful frequency did pass through Flora's tower. Caused quite a bit of damage too. Those cracks didn't appear out of nowhere. Freya's paints, the pink cassette tape, and the gramophone itself. They all sustained similar damage while they were in that room. That's some seriously powerful vibration. Enough to crack metal. Enough to knock someone out all the way across a room. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't get. If the frequency was so powerful and had such a big range, how did the murderer pull it off? Wouldn't they have been in range too? Think about it. They can't have been much further away from the gramophone than Flora was. They protected themselves. How? These are some pretty heavy-duty earmuffs. I think they'd be enough to block out the sound. Right. Let's go over everything from the start. One. Freya is painting Flora's portrait. They're listening to music on the gramophone. Two, the murderer is hiding in the attic, wearing earmuffs. Three, the golden beetle starts to emit its hissing noise. Hold on, how did it know? The beetle? Yeah, what triggered it at that particular moment? Pointer's research said it makes the noise when it feels threatened. I'm not sure. Maybe something in the music? Maybe. <clears throat> Four. Freya and Flora are both knocked unconscious by the vibrations. Freya lands on her back. She drops the brush and palette by her side. Five. The murderer fires the crossbow directly downwards. Six. The arrow is pulled back up on the reel. Seven. The murderer leaves the attic. Presumably. Eight. The door is kicked down. Fitz and Poppy enter the room. That's it. There's something bothering me. 
What? I just want to check something. Let's go back to the crime scene. Answer is in the painting. I'm sure of it. The plant. It's in the book. What? Look. a clue? So what's bothering you? Something that's not here. The thing we didn't find. We know she was holding it during the painting. Flora's ink dip feather? It was here in this room. Where'd it go? We found it somewhere else. We were a little too late to save it. So it was stolen from the crime scene and ended up in the incinerator down in the study. Someone wanted to destroy it, I guess. But how? How was it stolen from up here in Flora's tower? Presumably, Flora dropped it when she fell unconscious. Yeah, and then what? The murderer couldn't have stolen it if they were up in the attic. So the question is, how could they steal something from a room they weren't able to access? The final clue about the crime scene. Freya left it for us right here. in the unfinished painting. It's not quite a photo, but still, it's an image of the crime scene recorded just before the murder. Ah, if only she'd finished it, then I could be totally sure. It's true she never finished it, but she did intend to finish it. Meaning? We know more about the painting than what Freya actually got down on the canvas. Freya prepared all the colors she was going to need before she started painting. The yellow paint was going to be used to paint the sketch of something sitting in the window. Something in the window. Oh. There she is. Our little thief. How long has it been there? Did it hear the whole conversation? She did. But she's a very good listener. Well now, I think this has quite served its purpose, don't you? Penny, why did you- It's Penelope, if you don't mind. But before we begin, isn't there a certain formality demanding our attention? Lovely. Now, tell me, 
What was it that drove you this far? I'm ever so curious. Justice for Freya. Is that right? Interesting. Why did you do it, Penny? What did Freya do to you? Absolutely nothing. So, what? You just hated her indiscriminately? Freya Fellow was an inspiration to us all. She was possessed of a great energy. The volition to create something from nothing. The willpower to walk beyond her boundaries. She was truly free. Everything I couldn't be. You know what? I just realized I actually have no idea who Penelope Pointer really is. Weird, isn't it? Considering we've met her, what is it, three times now? Exactly. How do we know this one isn't a disguise, too? You think you've already hollowed us out, don't you? Only a few short hours at Tangle Tower, and you feel like you've got everyone sussed. Unearthed every single one of our secrets, nothing but bullet points for your notebook. Go on, indulge me. What does it say in your notes about Penelope Pointer? <laughs> I suppose I can't argue with that, can I? Penny, we only know what you choose to tell us, so why not help us out? Very well. Penelope Pointer is actually not very important at all. She pales in comparison to those who came before her and to those that came after. Living at Tangle Tower, it is very difficult to attain the levels of self-realization you probably take for granted. Um, you sure this is a Tangle Tower thing and not a you thing? Perhaps you didn't notice. Not one of them is happy. Not one. So why stay? Why not just leave? I thought she did leave. Penny, you said you traveled, didn't you? I did. Many times I've walked away. It did not help me. You saw the family tree hanging in the Grand Hall, did you not? Yeah, it lists a bunch of people who don't live here anymore. A bunch of people who don't live here anymore. I couldn't have put it better myself. My mother, for one. My father, too. The other two Remingtons. Poppy's mother, Primrose. And her brother, Richard. And Fitz's father. That's five. Five people that might have lived here, but don't. And that was the first question I wanted answered. You wanted to know where they'd all gone? More than that. I wanted to know if I belonged with them. I have no place here. Not among the Fellows, the Remingtons, or the Pointers. But I felt there must be a reason why everyone else left. Some common purpose they all shared. Perhaps it could be my purpose, too. So, what did you actually do about it? Nothing I could do, at first. Nobody would tell me anything. The more questions I asked, the fewer answers I got. Then, I found it. I was 19. Same age Freya is now. Found what? The study. The one hidden in the middle of the house. It's right next to a bedroom. I'd hear voices at night. Deep ones. And the strangest thing, the wall behind my bed would get incredibly hot. For hours on end, the paint would peel. Wallpaper wouldn't stay up. I thought I was cursed. I thought it was something trying to break through. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore. I found my way in the same way you did. Once you know it's there, it's simple. So, you got into the study and found the incinerator. That must have been a relief, right? It was still warm when I found it. Then, I looked inside. Let's see how thorough you've been. Tell me, 
Do you know what a misted is? Misted? Misteds? Sure, yeah. Hmm. You're more observant than I thought. Sorry, what are we talking about? It's a collective term, from before my time. Birds, insects, amphibians, anything living off the lake water. The mutation can take several generations, or it can happen overnight. Wait, mistids. Like cryptids. Uh, like Bigfoot or whatever. A little egregious, isn't it? I suspect that was an intentional parallel. The main difference being mistids are perfectly real. They're just kept secret. Or at least, that was the original plan. As it happened, some got out. Quite a few got out. How do you know all this? When I entered the study at 19, I found a single object that rather changed my life. Something which answered my questions while at once creating all new ones. The five missing family members standing together as a single unit, calling themselves the Ambassadors of Misted Mansion. So, the house was renamed from Misted Mansion to Tango Tower? And rightly so. The age of Misted Mansion is long past. When I looked inside the incinerator on my first visit to the study, I found nothing but ash. The afterimage of a bygone era denied to me in its entirety. The study, the room at the bottom of the lake, the lake itself, all empty shells. I felt my only hope lay with the ambassadors. If I could find them, maybe, maybe they'd share the family history that Flora and the others were trying so hard to forget. How did you track them down? It was tough. They'd taken almost everything. Books, maps, charts, the creatures themselves, all lost taken away or destroyed. But I got lucky. I got a lead. I found one, and he led me to the rest. And? What happened? Why do you paint out all their faces? They didn't help you either, did they? Nineteen-year-old me had imagined they'd all left with a mission. A unified purpose. But they hadn't. They were, in fact, every bit as fractured as the people that still live here. Most of them had left tracking escaped mystics. Some claimed to be researchers, others little more than hunters. All five, completely useless to me. Even your own parents? Eventually, I returned to Tangle Tower. I had nowhere else to go. I considered giving up. But instead, I made a decision. There was only one person at Tangle Tower still of interest to me. My dear Uncle Pointer had suddenly made a show of taking up astronomy. A fairly superficial charade, I don't think many people were fooled by it. But I knew it wasn't just a falsehood, it was a mask. Pointer had found something, something from the era of Mr. Mansion. So, where did he get the beetle? I cannot be sure. But I theorize that he received it in the post. In the post? From who? Who can say? Someone outside Tangle Tower. But the thought that he would be in contact with such a person. All that time, I decided to take what was owed to me. So you stole it. Stealing the beetle turned out to be only the first step. Upon realizing it was gone, Pointer made little effort to disguise his frustration. I asked what was bothering him. He foresaw no risk in sharing a little of the truth with his niece. He told me he'd lost a rare treasure, something he'd been keeping safe. I suggested, innocently, that perhaps it was not lost. Perhaps it had been stolen. He was very ready to believe he'd been the victim of theft. When I offered to call in a private detective... He jumped on the idea. She arrived the next day. Hawkshaw prides herself on her punctuality, as you know. Why, though? Why go through all that? 
the name, the costume, and everything? It's somewhat sad to admit, but I had little use left for Penny Pointer as she was. Hawkshaw afforded me new advantages, opportunities. But didn't you have to pretend to be working for Professor Pointer? Ah, well, that was one of the advantages. Pointer was in such a desperate state, he was finally willing to share some of his secrets. On the second day, Hawkshaw explained she needed to be able to search the secret laboratory. Pointer gave in, and gave me the code for the harp statue. Reluctantly, but still. So... you stole Pointer's research? I would have done, if I'd found anything worth stealing. But he had made remarkably little progress, barely scratching the surface of the beetle's true mystery. Which is? Ha! <laughs> she carries an exoskeleton approximately 90% identical to gold. But it's not the 90% I'm interested in. Did you ever question what exactly makes the water here so unique? Before Misted Mansion was built over the lake. Before the lake was even a lake. Lord Remington and his wife built a small structure here. A research station, supposedly. Fast forward two or three generations, and as you saw for yourself, it's been mostly cleared out. The ambassadors took everything when they left. And everything they didn't take was burned in the incinerator. However, possessing additional insight, I found something the others had missed. It's not much, but I have what I need. So, why isn't this the end of the story? Why did you stay? Why did you kill Freya? Simply put, Freya was too good for me. It's my fault. I pushed her over the edge, unknowingly, but still, I take the blame. What are you talking about? Did you know I based the design for Hawkshaw on something Freya painted? That's right. I had assumed it was purely abstract. I just thought it had a good energy. I later discovered it was a figure of some kind, something from Freya's recurring nightmare. For all her vitality, I think Freya was probably the most troubled of all of us. She was desperate to leave Tangle Tower, but she couldn't just walk away. For quite some time, she'd been trying to break into Pointer's laboratory. Freya and her friends were halfway through deciphering those symbols on the harp statue, I believe. Why did she care about getting into Pointer's lab? That's exactly what I wondered. At first, I thought perhaps she just wanted to free the beetles. She has a fondness for them. What Pointer was doing upset her significantly. But in fact, I think it was something else. I think she wanted to free Fiona. The real reason Freya was unable to leave Tangle Tower is that she could not get Fiona to agree to come with her. We're now firmly in the realm of speculation, but I think Freya felt that exposing the darker secrets of Tangled Tower, not just to the rest of the family, but to the world, would compromise all three families. And perhaps, somehow, free Fiona from the shackles of her inheritance. That was her plan anyway, but something happened before Freya could find her way into Pointer's laboratory. She found her way into your study, found your notes, found that photograph. I'm willing to bet she put it all together quicker than we did. So she worked out what had happened to the five ambassadors. Specifically, what you'd done to them when they refused to help you. Freya had made a promise to paint Flora as a birthday gift, a parting gift no less. She'd be in a locked room several hours away from her friends. It was my best chance. But why hide in the attic? And why bother with the beetle at all? The beetle in the gramophone 
wasn't for Freya. It was for Flora. She didn't deserve to be involved. She suffered enough. I couldn't get Flora out of the room, but if she could be unconscious, then she wouldn't have to witness anything. By the knife. The illusion of the painted knife with the blood. That was for Fiona. And Poppy too, I suppose. Gave them something to focus on. You mean it distracted them while you made your escape? It helped them cope. The very idea of something abstract, something supernatural. I believe it made things marginally less painful for them, initially. Worked on you, too. So why are you still here? Why not take your first chance and leave? Ah, well, I've been waiting for an opportunity to get my beetle back. I'd really rather not leave without it. Wait, it's still here? It's still inside the gramophone. What's going on? Poppy, they are both awake. I can see. You two all right? My head hurts. What happened to us? You were both unconscious. Fourteen minutes by my count. Really? You're both fine. No injuries. Was it the beetle? In the gramophone? I heard it through the ceiling in my room. The exact same sound we heard before the murder. I guess it must have been. So how did we get down here? What happened to Penny? Fit saved both of you, obviously. When I reached Flora's tower, you were both unconscious, and Penny was crouched down beside you. She had her crossbow on her, but who knows? She may have just been checking you were both asleep. Did you know she, uh, that she was the murderer? Poppy and Fifi suspected her. Apparently, they were pretty close to solving it themselves. Fitz did not want to believe us, because he liked Penny. A lot. But what happened? Fitz, what did she do when she saw you? She jumped out the window. What? Did she survive? She did. I heard something land in the garden outside my room. But by the time I got out there to check, she was already gone. Hang on. Poppy, why do you have Penny's hat bird? She left him behind. I found him sitting on the floor in the aviary, all by himself. Poor little thing. The mean lady didn't care about you at all, did she? No, she didn't. I apologize. Poppy seems to be under the illusion that the bird can understand human language. So, Penny got away. I'm afraid she did. We had suspected she might try to escape. I was stationed here by the lake's edge. I proved to be an ineffective guard. She took the boat. Did she take the beetle with her? Nope. How do you know? Because it's right here. It was still in the gramophone. I guess I scared her off before she had a chance to take it. Poppy, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to give it back to your father? No, I'm not. It doesn't belong to anyone. So, I'm going to put it on the ground and never bother it again. I think that's what she would have wanted. <laughs> 